What is going on, everybody? It's been so long since we've been live. It's been about a month since we talked about What If, but uh, we got we got something big to talk about tonight, and it's uh, the film that's been leaving everyone on this side, that side. There's no really in between, but we're talking about Eternals tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Full spoilers, by the way, so if you haven't seen the film, uh, you know, go check it out, and maybe you can pop in and check out this replay, but if you've seen the film, we're, we're breaking it all down. We're talking direction, characters, post credit scenes, the future of the MCU. Uh, we got some Spider-Man discussions that we'll kind of dive into up top so so many great things to kind of d- d- dissect and break down with you all and i'm so excited to be here tonight with this incredible uh panel of guests that we have on you've seen him on the channel before it won't be the last time but i'm so excited to have him on i'm gonna bring him here uh in a bit here but before we dive into tonight's discussion uh, i want to take the time to thank everyone for tuning in whether you're watching it live or again watch this on the replay have such a great time talking about these things with you all whether it's marvel dc star wars dramas netflix you name it i just love the, the discussion that we have here and i'm so excited to be having another one with you all tonight so before we get into tonight's discussion make sure if you haven't already to like the video share the video to anyone you know that loves marvel or doesn't like marvel and wants to talk about this film uh as well as leave your comments in the chat we're going to try to attend to them as often as we can as well as the comments in the uh after the video drops on the live so let's have a fun time with all that being said i'm going to bring in my special guest starting off with this young lady who's freezing right now where she's at but it's been a minute since i've uh, picked her brain on marvel and and especially this film. I'm so excited to have her on and see her pros and cons and everything in between about the turtles and talking about the one and only Amanda. What's going on? Hi, it's been so long. It's good it's to be back. Time. It's right. been a long time, Amanda. As we kind of talked about off screen, there's been so much that we've uh, gotten since we last saw each other. Batman trailers, Dune yeah. has blessed the world with his awesome, awesomeness <laughs> and so much more. But how you been though? I'm good. I'm good. Trying to Doing keep good? up with everything and watch so everything. It's just yeah. a disaster, but it's a fun disaster. So. Right? Right. <laughs> it's so good to have so much, you know, compared to last year when we were yeah. watching stuff, you know, <laughs> all the stuff was delayed and all that. So we got some stuff yeah. to finally watch. And it's been a pretty solid year with movies and shows. But mm-hmm. uh, we got this Eternals film, Amanda, that uh, we were all hyped about. Mm-hmm. Chloe Shao, best director, this incredible cast. I mean, there's mm-hmm. so much going on. I'm so excited to talk about it, Amanda. So excited. But hey, this is the first time people are tuning in. Uh, why don't you let the people know where you're at, where they can find you, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, well, you guys can always find me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. You can check out my website where I have my film reviews, interviews, articles, all that stuff, candidxcinema.com, and my YouTube channel, Candid Cinema. Awesome, awesome. So, Amanda, Eternals, you excited? Yeah. I'm excited to have this discussion with you guys, <laughs> for sure. No doubt, no doubt. Well, Amanda, she, like I said, guys, she uh, normally is on the channel when we talk our Marvel shows. She's mm-hmm. been on the WandaVision, the Falcon Winter Soldier, Loki, what if, and we had another gentleman join us on those conversations every single week. I'm so excited to have him back. He's out representing the East Coast. His uh, his teams are looking pretty good so far this year, uh, you know, and, and by the way, speaking of teams and, and basketball, because he's a basketball fan, I didn't know this was uh, Allen Iverson's lost long twin. Uh, if you guys didn't know, we just had a holiday by uh, by the name of Halloween, and this man gave a, a hell of a performance. I don't think he practiced that. I think it just came natural to him. I'm talking about the one and only Chris from Tay's Take. What's going on, man? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How you been doing, man? Hello. I'm Hello, doing good. Right there. Yeah, I love Halloween, so mm-hmm. there's that. Um, <laughs> no one does it better, man. No one does it better. <laughs> yeah, it. I'm retired now, so that's it. I have to, I have to leave. I have to no leave more. at a high note. We went on a high note, man. I, I mean, it was, a, it was a great, great note to leave on, my friend. <laughs> yeah, but how you yeah. been doing, Chris? How you been doing, my friend? Everything's cool. I'm, that's crazy that it's, she's freezing up there. It's, we got 70 today, so New York City, we thrive right now. I don't even know. Yep. Lucky. <laughs> don't Global convert warming. it. It's a thing. Don't, don't, you, don't you dare convert it. <laughs> yeah, everything, everything's cool over here. Um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about this movie. It's very uh, polarizing, yeah, as you say. It is. Um, yep. For not really a good reason, but we'll, we'll get into hey. it. I. I well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it, man. If Amanda knows this. Uh, you know, this is what it feels like to be a DC fan. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It hurts. Right it hurts. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's not anywhere near like a DC fan, Chris. But hey, man, why don't you do the people uh, out there uh, a favor and let them know where where they can find you and what you're all about, man? Yes, excellent. Uh, my name is Chris Tate, and I represent Tate's Take. My information is all up in there, and I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, documentary reviews. Um, whatever I can get my hands on, try to give you guys a little background of the story, um, then give you my take on it. So if you're into that sort of thing, you can go ahead and subscribe for your boy. Um, 
but yeah, big Marvel nerd. So happy to be back. It's been a, a couple weeks since What If. Um, so it's good to be back with the uh, with the old crew. It's like a little mini reunion here. Yeah, man. It's like the the, the Eternals. We're kind of, you know, I'm yeah. you know, yeah. gathering the game back. And, uh, you know, this next gentleman here has been someone that's been on the channel quite a few times. Uh, I, I'm beyond impressed by his content and, and his takes on stuff. And I'm so excited, especially with the comic book knowledge, to dive mm -hmm. into his thoughts on the Eternals and, you know, the post credit scenes and what it could all that mean and all that stuff. I'm so excited to have him on tonight. I'm talking about the one and only Michael from Black Gay Comic hey. Geek. What's going on, my friend? Hey, how's it going? I'm excited. <laughs> to be here yeah, uh, man. I always like uh when you guys invite me on the channel I'm a, plus the, just in general like it's been a while since I've been live even on my own channel last time I went live was uh Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings so yeah time yeah. fly I can't believe it's almost the end of the year number one aye, 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 like, yeah, November 9th and we got another month to go but Michael man <laughs> long, how you been as man long, as long as 2020 felt like it feels like 2021 yeah. is like flying yeah flying like by. Macari of the year it's yeah, just pretty flying much. by <laughs> man but Michael man why don't you let the fine folks at home know where they can find you what you're all about and uh disgrace them with your presence my friend let them know let them know all right, how's it going, everyone? My name is Michael, the Black Gay Comic Geek. I always say the things I love to talk about on my channel and in, uh, a cut has blood, sex, gore, magic, or any variation of the four. So I like to talk video games, fantasy, sci-fi, superheroes, comics, or anything in between. So uh, you could join. I'm actually uploading right now as we talk uh, <laughs> episode four, my episode four review of the Chucky series. So if you're interested in that, check out Chucky. Uh, I'm going to be also, I haven't seen uh, The Heart of They Fall, but I'm going to be, that's going to be the next thing that I review. And then also check me out on TikTok. It's Native American Heritage Month. So I'm also talking about some Native American uh, superheroes and comics and everything like that. You know, representation matters. So that's my thing. If you like to hear about that, come slide over to my channel. Come join me in my safe gaven. Everybody's welcome in the safe gaven. And so, yeah, yes, that's, that's pretty much, pretty much it. There it is, man. You mentioned Chucky there, Michael. How I'm a I'm a Chucky fan. I'm not a diehard fan, but how I'm hearing some good things about this show, man. Is it is it surprising people out yeah, there? Yeah, it, it actually surprised me because I was not interested in checking this show out. Like the yeah. last Chucky movie I saw was The Bride of Chucky. I think that was my last one too. I think yeah, so. so like yeah, yeah. I saw the trailer for like Seed <laughs> of Chucky and I was like wasn't interested. And yeah. then after I funny enough, after I went back and watched the show, I went and watched Seed of Chucky and I was like, Yeah, this is trash. <laughs> but the show actually like it's surprised like I actually enjoy it like it's not it's it's kind of predictable and they do a lot of like predictable things with like the the, the jump scares and everything like yeah. that but like the teen drama and the characters I'm like I'm not I'm actually in, in, really into liking this. it and, and yeah for, for like USA Network is I was, I was gonna like, say was that was my biggest hesitation is yeah USA. I was surprised I how rated are. R yeah they, they they went even with the uh the the kids like because mm -hmm. most of the actors are actual kids like they're 14 year olds playing 14 year olds so right. i was surprised by how like how far they went with it with with because i'm like there are some kid deaths and usually you don't see that right and right. chucky's cursing and everything yeah. so i was like yeah look, this this okay. i'm actually interested in this i'm gonna have to check it out man I, I like i said i've heard nothing but great things about it. i'm a i'm a big fan of like the original chucky and the sequels are okay and particularly the second one but yeah i'm gonna have to give it a watch man i'm a big again you saying they're, they're killing folks on there and they're not holding back so hey yeah. sign me up man what but about text, you a man what's that score magic i always say hey. that they're, they're <laughs> definitely giving that giving that to you Definitely. Exactly. I appreciate the recommendation. As far as recommend and Amanda, what, what have you been watching lately? Any good shows or, or movies that just caught your caught your attention? Um, I absolutely love The Heart of They Fall. Oh, yeah. As, like it's just so good. Yeah, yeah. So I was just gonna add that one. But I yeah. binge watched season five of Big Mouth on Friday. It's a guilty <sighs> pleasure. See that. I've heard it so that good. is not guilty. That's a okay. good show. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I was saying guilty pleasure because like it makes me nervous because a lot of people hate it on Big Mouth. So I've like, never yeah. seen anyone that didn't like it. Okay, good. Because I love I gotta it. Watch it. I, I did gotta it watch all it. I've never seen it. Friday. It's just a lot of fun. Good. It's yeah. what I like is that it promotes like healthy conversation for sex education in schools and like yeah. in an adult way. But like there's so many different characters that come in that like show uh people's anxiety and mm -hmm. and you know mental like health and all of that. So I think it was really interesting how they incorporated that. But it's an important show. It's good, it's funny, it's a bit yeah. wild, but you know. Good and time. I heard it's like the animated version of like sex education, but a lot more raunchier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you, you uh, can do so much with animation. Uh, I'm just saying. Sorry, I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't even. I don't. It's it's crazy. It's, it's, <laughs> it like sex education, you would like sit down and watch with your family. Yeah, yeah. This one, Big Mouth. 
this yeah. fucking you like, watch it's a, like, like it's midnight. It's like a raunchy family guy. It's like it's, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. They just go there. Check it out. I got you. I mean, and, and bringing it to you, Chris, man, what what uh what's been catching your attention lately, man? As far as shows that people should be watching right now, or movies Let's see. for that matter. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's a, a sleeper pick. I don't even know if it's a pick, but I'm watching it for some reason. I don't even know how I started, but Swagger on Apple TV Plus. That's the basketball. Oh show. yeah, yeah, yeah. How is that's that? That's a KD show. Um, yeah, yeah. That, uh, Ice Cube's kid. I forget his name. Uh, the NWA dude. Ah, uh, uh, um, O'Shea, O'Shea, O'Shea Jackson. O'Shea Jackson. O'Shea yep, Jackson. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So it, it's it, the acting is terrible on it, but I'm just saying, like, I'm bought into <laughs> so the you're show. You're selling me, man. You're selling me. You're right. Yeah, I'm not trying. To, I'm not even trying to sell it, but it's just like it's one of these things where I'm just like, now nah, I gotta know how it ends, and it's like, fuck, like I'm trapped. Yeah. Um, but it is like it's it's like a weekly release, so it's cool. You get like some time. You don't have to like you know sit there and figure it all out. So I've yeah. been watching that. I'm not I'm not you know promoting it yet, but it's interesting. If you like basketball, it's cool too because it's like right. a lot of movies and TV shows. Like when they do basketball, it's kind of whack because like it's like they get kids that don't know how to play basketball. These kids look like mm-hmm. they know how to play, but they don't know how to act. So it's like you get your <laughs> you get your you little trade off. One you have to pick yeah, one. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, of course, besides that, the heart of they falls. That's the, my my favorite Netflix movie maybe ever. Um, bro, just, 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 so just I don't even know what to say about it. That's just fire. That's Netflix doesn't have a lot of movies that you could just slap on on the big screen and be like, okay, mm-hmm. cool. I don't know the difference between this. They, yep. Like when you watch Netflix, you're like, oh, this is Netflix. Yep. Which is fine, but it's like you know, it's good with like they can move. Put them, like I don't know why they didn't put it to the theaters for like longer and more wide release, but yeah. Um, maybe yeah. I, maybe now that they see it, it, it will. But um, that's really good. And what else am I watching besides that? Do, 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 do. How's uh, Insecure? I know you've been doing your weekly breakdown. Oh, Insecure yeah. Insecure breakdown so far? Insecure, yeah. We only got three episodes so far. Very yeah. good, very good. I'm so behind on, on Secession because of, of Insecure, oh, but man, I think this weekend I'm just going to sit down and, and, and catch up, but I, I do need yeah. a little a little refresher on the uh, on last season. I forget how it ended. It's been so long, but um, that's those that's are like two of my favorite shows, Yeah. Um, so I, I got to get on, I gotta get back on that. So yeah, those that's my routine right now. Nice, man. Well, there you guys have it. Any recommendations and movies and shows? You heard it from the panel. There's some great, great content out there. If I throw my name in the hat, I'll say I just saw um, King Richard last week. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty beyond impressed. I'll just say I'm that. I'll uh, drop my review. So excited. On. Will Smith. Anybody uh, watch yeah. uh, Spencer? Yeah. I didn't. I, I missed it. How was it, Amanda? Fantastic. One Fantastic. of my favorite movies of the year. So Kristen Barre really game. Good. Is it one of the movies that's like, you know, it's gonna win awards good, or it's like it's actually good fun to watch? Good. No, like it's just it's literally Oscar bait. I'm telling okay. you, like straight up Oscar bait. So. But also enjoyable to watch. That's like there's two different sure. ways. Sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you like Princess Diana's story, you'll cry like story, I yeah. did. It's a very yeah, interesting yeah. story, so you'll mm. get emotional if you're attached to it. But technically, it's like. Like the technical aspects, really good. Really good, yeah. Same yeah. guy that did uh, Jackie, right? The same yeah. director. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's it's, now, but it's yeah. not it's it's like is it a reimagination of something? Like if she survived this, then then this would happen, or is it like the actual story? It's like the it's, week after when she's like going to divorce her husband or something. Yeah, right? that's the decision. Okay, yeah. It's like okay. three days, like it's over Christmas, so it's three yeah. days, and then it's like yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no spoilers, no spoilers. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. No spoilers on the true story. No spoilers. Yeah, don't ask. Then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, guys, there you have it. It's a lot of great content coming up, and I mean, there's I'm stuff, so much great stuff out now, and so much great stuff uh, stuff coming up. And speaking of coming up, listen, we we talked about it on this channel before. We talked about it off screen, but uh, this, this Spider Man movie. Um, starting with you. <laughs> Let's start with you, Michael. Let's start oh, with you, okay. my friend. Let's, so we got number one. We, we got a poster. I think it was uh, what's today? Tuesday. We didn't come out for us. Sunday. I think like a random Sunday. And yeah. Sony, who was yeah. the worst promoter ever, was like hyping it up, like the trailer was going to drop. But we we got a poster. Uh, as far as posters go, uh, it's, it's terrible. The trilogy. I would say it's the trilogy of all the other posters. They're just horrible and <laughs> just a mesh of nonsense. But Michael, man, your thoughts on this poster? transitioning over to a little bit your thoughts on if you expect the trailer coming soon and we can we can maybe talk about not the per, the leaks that came out the other day but just your feelings on the leaks that we've gotten so far and, and if you're excited for this film at all um like i said the, the poster is terrible like and, and then it's, it literally yeah. tells us nothing that we don't us uh dr octopus sandman yep. green yep. guy like <laughs> we saw that in the trailer already like give yeah. me something to, and then also considering it's a comic book movie. You have so many great comic book artists that can mm-hmm. that make 
this for a lip. Like they could have had a comic book artist do a great poster. Yeah. Like I don't need to see Tom Holland in literally the same pose he had in the trailer. At the end, yeah, at the end yeah. of on the, the trailer. Like, yeah, on the bridge. <laughs> And then you Which I'm pretty sure a, this whole film is going to be taking place on the bridge at this point. Yeah, pretty much. You swipe it on a yeah. poster. Yeah, that poster is just uh, what did Essa say? Yeah, that poster is not it. Like it was just, it was just terrible. Like impressed me. Like this is a comic yeah. book movie, and the, like if I saw that on the issue of a cover, I'm like, I'm not reading this. This is terrible. It's yeah. it's pretty. I mean, we got. I mean, hey, shout out to Matt. Matt, he likes it, and I'm glad you like it, my friend. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you like it. I mean, yeah. art is all, art is all subjective, but yeah, sure. But, but, but as far as the leak, like, I'm so I don't know what's going on over at Sony. Like Marvel in and of itself, and even Lucasfilm. Like the fact that they hid the the Luke Skywalker reveal and everything. Yeah. Like the fact that Marvel is able to hide things. Like you don't get anywhere near these level of leaks. In a Marvel movie, but I'm like, I don't know what Sony's doing. Like, they need to hire better security, or I don't know if they're doing it on purpose. That's what it's trying to get people me. hyped for the movie. But I'm like, with yeah. the first Spider Man, or not the first one, Far From Home made like a billion dollars. So, yeah. you know, people are going to, and plus the it. fanfare with the internet, like, seems like every little Spider Man news, everybody's talking about it, like mm -hmm. Spider Man. Spider so, you know, people are hyped about the movie. Yeah. So, like, why are you leaking all this information? Like, I don't need to, I feel like I know the whole movie at this point. Like, yeah. it's sure. making me less excited about the movie. I'm still gonna go see it, but I'm of just course, like, as much course. as I was just like, oh, Spider Man No Way Home, Multiverse, and Tobey Maguire. But now I'm like, I don't care. Just give me the movie now. Cause <laughs> I'm like, true. I don't care anymore. It's true. I, 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 I'll share my thoughts on that in a minute, but I'm, I'm kind of right there with you, man. Chris, tossing it to you, man. Just your thoughts again on the, on the poster that we got. If you're a fan of it, uh, if not, uh, and of course your thoughts on this kind of the, has the leaks kind of um, made your interest in this film a little bit less than what we were, you know, before we got all the stuff that's been out there now? Well, number one, I don't follow all the cool people that you guys follow, so I've avoided all of the leaks. I don't even know Lucky what was leaked. I don't want to yes. know. Keep I don't that even, way. Lucky don't you. even, yes. don't even, like, don't even think it in your brain, because if I turn into, you know, Jean Grey, I don't read your mind, I'll be tired. <laughs> I, I, so yeah, that's one thing. And posters, number, number two, I don't, I don't care about posters for movies. Yeah. I care about trailers and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I still watch all the trailers. I know some people are getting into the camp of not watching trailers because it ruins a lot, but I love trailers. I did not like this first trailer that they released for Spider-Man because I was like, damn, it's not epic. Like, it's like, this is like regular. Like, this, it's like what the kids say, mid. Um, <laughs> but then the fucking, like the Batman trailer, that shit is so epic. And then you, you see that thing in the, in the theaters. What did I watch when they put the Batman trailer? Dune. My yeah, God. It, just, that it, it's like, it's, it was like I'd never true. seen it. Yeah. I was like, it's and then that ending when it comes uh, when he's walking yeah, through, I was like, man. this is a trailer. Yep. And then fucking yep. Spider-Man, you got me playing around with this kid. I was like, this is supposed to be the biggest movie of your year, Marvel. Yeah. What are you doing? So I don't care about posters. I never have. The yeah. poster is like whatever. Mm -hmm. But the trailer, damn. I know. And then we're supposed to get the other one. I've been having some time waiting soon. on that. Yeah. So then I, I assume that'll be better, but yikes. Take me there somewhere. I don't Listen, even want another trailer. Like I'm gonna say at this point, the trailer will probably yeah, give away everything. Yeah. Um, which I assume, if I'm not mistaken, I think the next big Sony release is next week with um uh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yeah. So I would imagine we'll probably get another trailer yeah. either the week of or the day that they the movie comes out. But also next week. why would they why would they manufacture leaks? Like, why would they need to do that? They wouldn't need to do that There's because no they're way. not promoting it. They're literally not even promoting Listen, this. That's why. So they're like, let the fans promote it, and this free is promotion. What you're doing. Yeah, they're they're going bankrupt. So they're just letting the fans <laughs> at this point, they're letting the, the people in the asylum run the asylum. Is pretty much their mindset. I mean, it's Sony, as we know. What was it Didn't two years ago when the Venom emails got leaked decently? and all that stuff? That's why. Didn't did do good? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't I mean, make sense. But the yeah, first Venom movie movie. also made like almost a billion, a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. Which is so. still mind boggling. But uh, That's yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> and, Ven and Venom is more there. I mean, granted, Spider Man is also still theirs, but they're not sharing Venom yeah, with, with Marvel. With okay. So yeah. like, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, tossing it to you. Just your thoughts again on this fabulous uh, poster that I I can't wait to put in my bathroom. Um, you know, we got Green Goblin in the back. We got Doc Cop. We got Sandman. We got Electro. Uh, you know, people are joking saying Mephisto is in the poster, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see the fire. Yeah. See the fire. Uh, 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 <laughs> but no. <laughs> your thoughts on this poster, and of course, your thoughts on just the leaks at this point uh I'm, I'm sure i was joking saying there's no surprise there's still going to be surprises of the film you know no right. doubt if it's two and a half hours i expect we, we're going to get a, a huge chunk of it we don't even know about uh but it's your excitement level at this point knowing that the film is, is almost a month away honest to god 
when I, I, like, I swear to you, I saw the poster. I'm like, eh, yeah. 10 yeah. o'clock at night. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Thanks mm -hmm. for dropping. This is fine. And then my yep. job on, as social media manager, whatever. Yeah. Then yesterday, I'm having such a good day. Ooh, such yesterday. a good day. Such a good day. <laughs> and then I go on Twitter because I'm checking for news. I mm -hmm. scroll the mm -hmm. timeline. I see, I see the one image. Mm -hmm. And I swear to God, I lost. <laughs> I'm like, you got a bitch. Like, I lost it. I yeah. messaged everybody. I'm like, yo, there's yeah. spoilers. Do not go on Twitter. But obviously mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. listen because they're like yeah. trying to block people. But I think that they have not promoted Spidey whatsoever. This man, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Spider-Man No Way Home has been trending every single day that yeah. is the marketing <clears throat> they have spent zero dollars <laughs> yeah. on this marketing okay all right yep <clears throat> and at the, after last night i i'm fed up i'm tired there's still more photos apparently that are going mm -hmm. around and oh, yeah. i'm scared to even stay on social media but all of this has like been taken too far. We were yeah. spoiled with Venom from a very credible source, which is irritating, and I blocked yeah. said person. Eternals post credit scene was spoiled a week before. Yep. And thanks to was, a big publication. Yeah, that wasn't even like right. Yeah, that yeah. was exactly. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's what bothers me the most is like, but what are you gaining from clout and tweeting all of this? What are you gaining? And and then it spreads like wildfire on socials. Yeah. It's very irritating mm -hmm. because many of us know, mm -hmm. all of us kind of know, but then to yeah. actually have that kind of confirmation in certain ways, like it just... Yeah. It's unfortunate and it bothered me. So I was pissed off yesterday. And then the thing that's annoying <laughs> about, because the, the John Campia uh, tweet, I didn't see mm -hmm. it from John Campia's uh, Twitter in and of itself. Mm -hmm. The thing yeah. with Twitter is if if you like somebody's post, yeah. and now all it, your it followers see other yeah. Yeah, 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 that yeah, you yeah. like. Yeah. And I'm, so I saw somebody else talked about it and I was just like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's like your shit, man. It's tough. It's <laughs> I don't want to see this and now yeah. it's ruined. So. It's, 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 I mean, it's, I, we've all been kind of following social media and superhero movies for more than a decade, but I don't, I think it's, it's just, this has never been this worse. I, I can't think of a no. film as, as big as Spider Man, and of course, it's Sony and Marvel, but I can't think of a film that has been, whether it's been leaks, whether it's been actors themselves, a la Jamie Foxx, you know, my guy over a year ago posted on his Instagram, <laughs> gave up a pretty big spoiler. Uh, oh, you know, Alfred, the, the, the other actor. Alfred Molina the, came out. No, 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 the teacher, the, the black. Oh, JB. Yeah, he was yeah. on a red carpet at some random <laughs> charity event. It's like, oh, you know, who's your favorite Spider-Man? Oh, yeah, he that can't. I mean, yeah, I don't at this point. It's just again. Kevin Feige is just like, I'm making a Star Wars film for the next year or so. Uh, you, you guys, you Sony, do. you'll just take the lead, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's been a mess. It's been a mess. But hey, I'm still excited for yeah. the film. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, I also, yeah, yeah, I also think yeah. the fandom, I also think part of it is the, the ravidness of the fandom. Oh, yeah. So the Cause even though, like when uh, Shang-Chi, the Shang-Chi trailer was dropping, the turn, mm -hmm. like people are like, where's the Spider-Man trailer? Where's the yeah. Spider-Man? Like, we're right. not talking about that right yep. now. We're talking about these yep. movies. Like, stop, like, yeah, like it's it's Did that I read toxicity that they, as well. That's like they're downvoting trailers for other Sony films yeah. just because the yeah, Spider Man the, trailer the, hasn't yeah, come out. The Spider Man trailer, yeah. Crazy. It's that's just so, so annoying. So but crazy. also it's like they look for these leaks. Oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. what bothers oh, yeah. me even more. Like they'll search <laughs> and then yeah, yeah. repost. And I'm like, I'm muting yeah. all of you. I can't deal with this. Like <laughs> I just can't at this point. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's hard to escape it. But uh, again, luckily we're less than well, uh, about a week away from being a full month away for the film. But We'll see it, and it's going to be a good time, and we're going to all talk about it and, and have a good time with it. So, uh, Toby McGuire, Andrew Garfield, we'll see if they'll make their way into the film. But uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But let us know in the chat, guys, how you all are feeling about posters, trailers, leaks, excitement level, all that fun stuff. But we are here tonight to talk about a film that uh, that is out, that has come out, and this is a full on spoiler discussion that we're going to get into here with uh, Eternals. But before we get into it, just a little bit kind of where the film is at now as far as box office wise if you all are big into i used to be a big fan of box office and i still am uh, but obviously numbers are skewed with uh, everything that's going on in the world but as it stands 165 million globally uh 71 million on the opening weekend uh tossing to you first chris man when you see these numbers come to expect it a little bit underwhelming the numbers you kind of expected from the film uh just your thoughts on this uh box office from the eternals after its first weekend last week 
Yeah, I don't really do a lot of box office stuff, but I think it's a little lower than I would have wanted it or that definitely Marvel would have wanted it, especially seeing as Black Widow came out with some real good shmoneys and mm-hmm. was on Disney at the same time. So that makes yeah. it look brazier yeah. for, for the for the Eternals. But I think you're going to get a lot of those people who are like, they see the hate and they're not going to go. And a lot of people are going to see the hate and they're just going to go to see how bad it really is. Yeah. Um, but if they really watch you know certain reviews they're going to say you know I, I watched your review you you told you know people like you know like ignore the review like go watch it you know, especially if you're like Mark, like marvel like just yeah you know have an opinion for yourself so yeah i think it's 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 i think they should be you know for a post pandemic i mean november is a little late um 71 what was shang chi was it 80 or, or was so it last mid 80s i want to say 88 and then like you mentioned mm. black widow was a club close 90. to 90 so yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's 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 fair, but the, the cast is is too star studded, and it's a Marvel you know heavy hitter, so it's a yeah. little low. But I think uh, um, I hope that it it carries more weight as as we go on, and I hope that the yeah. second week drop is not too crazy. Right. Um, right. Yeah. I actually went to go watch it for a second time today, actually, right before mm-hmm. this, and um, the the theater was was pretty was pretty packed for pretty for packed. A Tuesday. I know yeah. AMC Tuesdays they give you a little the discount, all that. Yeah, so yeah. you get a little you get a little extra people there, but it was mm-hmm. cool to see. Like, okay, I hear. I mean, I know it just came out, but it's yeah. still hopefully. I hope that their second week is not a big dip, which will make it you know really like really lose. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, competition wise, we got a couple things red notice on Netflix. I don't think anything big in the movie theater space is going to be out, so I think it, yeah. it, it'll have a good chance yeah. to make a, a second weekend. But Amanda, your 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 take on this box office return after the first weekend? We're gonna we're gonna talk about the Rotten Tomato score influencing that that box yeah. office result. But just your your thoughts on did it meet your expectations under under uh, uh, cut the expectations as far as box office goes? Honestly, I don't think it underperformed because yeah. uh, like every single showtime at my theater was sold out. So mm-hmm. I think it's just, I don't know, maybe people saw the trailer and they didn't vibe with it. So they're like, does it even connect to the rest of the MCU? Should I like, yeah. they maybe didn't know, but I know the general audience was like, it's a Marvel movie. It's a fun time. Let's go. So it was sold out. Um, I think it's fair, I guess, maybe because it's the beginning of November, it's the placement for a comic book movie. I don't know if that's what it is either. Mm-hmm. Um, only Clifford is coming out this Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Box cinematic gold, yeah. So uh, unless people want to go see a big red dog, they're yeah. probably going to make their Most way to anticipated the anticipated movie of the year. I'm Ever. so excited. And you have to watch Ever. it in IMAX. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> yes. <before. laughs> um, but yeah, I think, um, I think it'll hold steady for second week. Um, but yeah, people need to go watch it. They do need to go watch it. It's a great cast, yeah. as as mm-hmm. Chris said. And you know, either way, if you did enjoy, if you didn't like it, I watched it twice. I brought mm-hmm. like my friends and everything, so it was still a, an enjoyable watch because yeah. now you kind of know these characters. So you know, general audience is like filling those seats. So yeah. it's it's what it is, I guess, at this point. No, I agree. But uh, Michael, man, your thoughts on the on the box office receipts return? Uh, big numbers, small numbers, mediocre numbers. I mean, seventy million dollars. Any studio would love to have a seventy oh, yeah. million dollar opening. Yeah, and I know a lot of because mm-hmm. I because I've read articles of people saying like, oh, for any other studio, these would be great, but for yeah, Marvel, Marvel, this is yeah. terrible. I'm like. Yeah. No, it's still just because Marvel is used to having movies open yeah. at like a hundred or ninety million. This, this is the Eternals. This is a, a group of unknown characters. Nobody knows anything about it. Yeah, Black yeah. Widow opened at a higher number, but also Black Widow has been in the MCU yeah. for ten plus years. We know the character. We are invested in the character. And plus, after mm-hmm. Endgame, we want to see what her backstory is and everything like that. So it would make sense that Black Widow opened at a higher number. And even Shang-Chi, I believe, opened at a much higher number. But even with that, mm-hmm. we kind of knew what we were going to get. It was an action movie. Yeah. We were talking about They were talking about the hyping up, the action choreography and everything like that. So you're like, oh, a hand-to-hand Marvel movie? Let's go see that. But with Eternals, nobody knew what this movie was going to be. Yeah. Like... Mm-hmm. And so yeah. even when the trailer drop, we're like, we don't know what we're getting with this movie is characters that are obscure, even more obscure than like the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so for it to open at 70 million dollars, I think that's pretty damn good. Like yeah. Ant-Man didn't open at 70 million. Like, but we, yeah, that's we before the pandemic. Yeah. yeah, that's before the pandemic. Yep. So mm-hmm. for 70 million mm-hmm. during a pandemic, I think those are great numbers. No, and agree. even with the 161 global, I'm I'm hoping it doesn't yeah. take a huge drop next week. But yeah, like Amanda said, there's no the, the next major release is going to be in Kanto, which I actually just saw yesterday, which is not until the 24th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So if anything, Disney's competing with itself. So hopefully right. they have another week to, you know, continue to make, you know, make more. But yeah, ho- I'm, I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure the, the Rotten Tomatoes score affected some people. Cause, cause funny some enough, people, when I got, yeah. when I, when I got the screener for Eternals, I asked one of my friends and she was like, yeah, I'm not interested in seeing that. Thanks for the invite. But yeah, no, no. Oh, I was wow. Like, disrespectful but so, right. i'm pretty sure there are some people that are like yeah, yeah. Ter- eternals like what yeah. is what is this movie i'm not interested to see it. no i'm not interested to see that and then yeah. then you add the score on top of that so yeah there are probably some people i, I uh, yeah i'm right I, there with still, you, man. yeah but i still think these are those are those are good numbers and, and not even to discount, and we'll talk about it when we get into the conversation about the film, but even some countries, you know, not even playing in certain countries yeah. because of the banning of, you know, the... Oh, we're going to talk about the, that. Yeah, we'll, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so even that into account, it, it, was, a, it was a high, it was a, uh, you know, a tall hill to climb, and it's some pretty decent numbers. But, I mean, to kind of segue into the elephant in the room, uh, this is obviously the worst review, Rotten Tomato uh, reviewed MCU film to date, 47% on Rotten Tomato, 80% uh, audience score. Uh, Amanda, kicking it to you first, that score, I, you know, I was joking saying this is what it feels like to be a DC fan because you know, we always expect rotten scores uh, for the DC movies, but this is the first, uh, this is pretty big, out of the 13 year run, yeah. the first rotten score of the MCU. I think 66 was the lowest with Thor The Dark World, but 47%. And what's you think, Amanda? That is, is low. it warranted? <laughs> it's honestly like, even though I didn't enjoy it as much as other people did, I don't yeah. think that it should be at a forty-seven. Yeah, but it's out of like three hundred and thirteen reviews. Mm-hmm. So, like, the thing with RT that bothers me the most is that it's a consensus. So, if you actually look at these reviews individually, which I always tell people to do, because yes. it's, it's completely different, then you kind of see who didn't like it, and you're like. Does that review even make sense? Because I read some yeah. of them and I'm like, what the hell are you guys talking about? Yeah. Like, it's just completely off base. But like, if if you're like criticizing the film itself, that's fine. But there were mm-hmm. some reviews on there that were not doing that. And I'm like, how are yeah. you on RT? Why are you a critic? Doesn't yeah. make any sense. Please just retire. Um, <laughs> just saying. Because it's yeah. always the, it's the older ones. Anyways, sh- yeah. I'm not saying that. Um, <laughs> but it's the truth. <laughs> Yeah. So um, the, for me, even though I'm on like the, you know, the other end of it, I yeah. still don't think that it should be that low. Cause like guys, Thor, the dark world, come, it, like what? Yeah. what, but also it's the change in how people are um, feeling about the formula in the mm. MCU Yeah, and the risks that it's taken. And it's also like Thor is so old, like dark world, so old that mm-hmm. like if people, if that came out now and they watched it, I'm pretty sure it'd be sitting at like a 23%. <laughs> And it's the truth. So it depends yeah. like when it actually came out. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I mean, that score, I mean, tossing it to you, Michael, this, that score again, I'll put it up on the screen because it is, you know, it, it's a pretty, to see a Marvel film getting 47%, a rotten score, 80%, you know, is, is, is um, you know, not bad at all from an audience perspective. And obviously mm-hmm. it's the conversation about critics and audiences or whatever the case may be. But I mean, this, your thoughts, Mike, did you expect this after you saw the film? And I believe you saw it right around the time before the reviews hit them, uh, hit, hit everyone. Did you expect that number or were you surprised by that, that low number by the audience? Or I, was say, very, I was very surprised by, yeah. uh, the low number. Yeah. I saw it, uh, a week before the review embargo lifted. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I will say like for this to be the first Marvel movie to have a rotten score, Hmm. It, it, it's a it's a pretty damn good batting average more or less yeah in terms of like the yeah. the the scope of the mcu what 24 24 movies in and this is the first done meanwhile dc only had like six or whatever. <laughs> damn yeah. there every single one, one yeah, yeah. you know it's divisive it's like crazy when you think about a marvel movie coming out and it being divide like the marvel movies you think about that like that's mm-hmm. the thing that always brings people together now it's all yep. like oh marvel movies being divisive so yep. i will say that's good <laughs> on the MCU's part, but like considering the score, I'm like this movie, yeah, like I meant Thor the Dark World exists. This movie is nowhere near as bad as Thor the Dark World. This movie is nowhere near as bad as Iron Man 2. Doctor yeah. Strange, even like all of these movies exist. And I'm like, but this movie gets rated the the, the worst. Like mm-hmm. what the hell were y'all watching? Yeah, I didn't <laughs> love the movie. I didn't go out the movie saying this is amazing. Yeah. I won't put it in my <laughs> top five, but like for this, the, the worst, like what y'all must've been like sleep. Well, half asleep when you're watching <laughs> when you're watching the movie. Like I, I didn't I didn't understand 
understand that. But yeah, don't 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 trust Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I yeah, say. I mean, Amanda touched on as far as like really dive into the minutia what Rotten Tomatoes actually how you look at the score and how you break it all down. And of course, I know a lot of people, as you mentioned, Michael, a friend of yours saw the score, and a lot of people value that number, right? They yeah. they look at Rotten Tomatoes as just a simple: is it rotten? Is it positive? Is it fresh? And and they kind of dictate because again, these movie theaters it ain't cheap to go to the theater too. So a lot of people do take a lot of stock in that, but. You know, wrapping up the conversation, Chris, man, were you were you surprised, my friend, of that 47 score, which is, again, the lowest of any MCU film in the 13-year run that they've been on? <laughs> yeah, everyone should be surprised. It's nonsense. I think uh, it's one of the most annoying things about this whole Eternals gate, in my opinion. I think it's I think it's it's, it's all nonsense. And I really hope I know we're going to get into the diversity of the film. And I really hope that doesn't affect it. But I was trying to go through. I have this here for you guys. Yep. You guys all know this. None of this is a secret to you guys. We always talk about Thor the Dark World. Uh, we all know that's not a bad movie. But here we have it. 66% <laughs> on, on Rotten. Yeah. 75% audience score. Okay, cool. This movie, it, Eternals, is 1,000 times better than Thor the Dark World. And, I'm a, and I actually don't even hate that movie. Yep. Captain Marvel. People, don't, people hate that movie with a they passion, do. complain they about do. it. Certified fresh, 79% yep. on Rotten Tomatoes, 45% mm -hmm. audience score. What are Oof. we doing here? Got it. We got a nice young white woman lead. Got it. No problem. I understand. Iron Man 3, I don't even, this movie's look whatever. Certified I fresh, 79%. Black. Got it. So yeah. good, though. The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> People, the black a lot sheep of people, of the MCU. Lot of people, <laughs> lot of people don't like that movie. Yeah, sixty-seven percent on the tomato meter, seventy percent audience score. Mm. Last but not least, Venom. Let there be carnage. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Certified rotten, but fifty-nine yes. percent, which is ten percent like higher or whatever. Right, the, whatever. Let it be yeah, eighty-four percent audience score. Venom. Mm -hmm. Let there be carnage. Now, mm -hmm. all those other movies I listed is another, <laughs> another another phase of the MCU. Venom basically came out yesterday. <laughs> no one in God's green, I always call it Lil Nas X internet. No one on Lil Nas X internet is going to tell me that Eternals is worse than Venom mm -hmm. Let There Be Carnage. Yeah. yeah. You can't yeah. tell me that. You cannot tell me that. Venom, no, Venom number one is better than Venom two, and Eternals is better than Venom one. Like, we're not doing this. Like, so you, tell me, yeah. someone needs to explain to me why I need to look at Rotten Tomatoes. And I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I'm, Let I'm that a be critic, carnage. It's garbage. But, I, <laughs> but I, watch, I, I watch the reviews. I take it seriously because if I yeah. want to be a, a rotten person one of these days, yeah. I need to look into this shit. And you have to explain to me, what are you watching? And I went today, went ran out of work to go watch this game. He's like, maybe I'm crazy. I sat there for another two and a half hours. <laughs> and I said, okay, it's just as good as I remember it. Yeah, this is nonsense. I just don't understand it. And the only thing I can think is that people are being prejudiced because we get a nice little sprinkle of all these different types of people. But the movie itself, I'm not, and and I'm not comparing to the comics. So I don't know the story. Mm -hmm. I'm not comparing to other the rest of the MCU. I'm saying when I sit down there that I enjoy this film, and there's not a lot of things that I didn't like about it. So don't tell me that this Rotten Tomato shit. We, this is supposed to be the leader in of of all film reviews and all this kind of shit. And if this is how we supposed to follow, then why would people even look at it? That's like Billboard. If, if we find out Billboard is, is fudging numbers or like the Grammys yeah. and the Oscars, so why it's like if you, when they start losing credibility, then people they, we won't care anymore. Then it loses the prestige. So mm -hmm. don't tell me. And I just and then you just gave this woman an Oscar for a movie that sucks. <laughs> that is the worst best picture movie I've ever seen in my life. No Man Land. If anyone's was watching at home, No Man Land is the worst movie that ever won best picture that I've ever seen in my life. Please tell me the another one that is worse than that movie. And Green you, that, book. The point, Green Book. That's ten times better than than, than No Man Land. At least that shit had jokes and and it was a real story and people learned about a real book that had to exist for Black people to go through the South. That's a real story. You, this woman is coming to with an Academy Award and you gave her movie forty eight percent and you gave Let There Be Carnage. Hey, we gotta talk about the rest of the movie. I'm gonna we're in the multiverse. Real quick, just uh, but yeah. to throw this in there because James mm -hmm. Robinson did to to, uh, to make a point to uh, Rotten Tomatoes. It's not so much Rotten Tomatoes itself because yeah, Rotten Tomatoes just collects the the scores of course. and reviews, right? But right. it's the source. Yeah, we look at the source that we go it's, to. It's more the review, the reviewers themselves. Where I'm but, just they, like, but they have, they, yeah, they have to be selected. Up. Rotten Tomatoes. Those people are are selected to to make reviews. No. Yeah. No. If I want to be on, I have to apply. I can't. I can't be on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. You could one day you will be right, <laughs> maybe, yeah. and then you will help. You will help, like, like the people. It's like the academy, yeah. it's just a bigger academy. Yeah. It's like, yeah, 
Yeah, you, you are a big unit, but it, and it's not their fault. But it's like, yeah, the people that died at Astroworld is not Travis Scott's fault. But you brought the people there, so someone's got the answers to this shit. Like, yeah, it just it just boggles my mind that that I want to know, and I and I didn't do it with the Amanda treatment of going and reading all these and things. I didn't break it down to see what people are complaining about. I know Film Speak got a nice essay about why he hates it. <laughs> I didn't get to that forty five minute video either. But hating a movie is different than this dude on here talking about this movie is two out of ten. In what world? Cats? I never seen cats. I know cats is a probably two point five out of ten. Less than cats. Yeah, yeah, less. That's what? Yeah, Whoa! It's, it doesn't even a get a score. Yeah, yeah, it's not two even a board. <laughs> like I don't even operate in movies like that. Like a Negative. movie that low doesn't come across yeah. my eyeballs. A two right. out of ten. Right. You understand what that means? Like that's a dude here in our in our yeah. chat room for sure. But yeah. The idea is it's not like a two out of ten is not that much lower than what they gave it a four point eight out of ten or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. So I just I'm very confused about it, you know. And and I, you know I usually understand if people hate a movie, I'd be like, mm -hmm. okay, I see why you don't like that movie. I, I'm, yeah. I know I'm not the fucking end all be all, but I just don't see it here. And I'm waiting for Amanda to tell me why it sucks so bad. <laughs> whoa, whoa, hey. whoa! I didn't say that now. <laughs> hey. I watched your review. <laughs> I we're going hey we're nice. gonna get into it we're gonna get into it. and i mean this and i appreciate you guys having again the, the score i think affected the box office a bit there were people that were nervous to see it just because they do rely so heavily on that score uh but you know in my opinion they're missing out on something pretty unique and different from the mcu but let's just get into it let's just get into this movie break it down we'll, we'll talk about characters and all that stuff but just starting with you amanda again going into this film we talked about it on our live streams excitement level are they going to bring in the X-Men? Are they going to bring in, you know, explaining all the different elements, Galactus? And we're, we're, this is a different element of the MCU. We're talking yeah. about, you know, uh, larger stuff than uh, time travel and Thanos. We're, we're on another level now. So opening up this film, as we get the Eternals, we learn about the Deviants and the, and the Celestials, and we meet the Eternals and all that stuff. What were your thoughts? Just kind of that first 10 15 minutes of seeing this film as we see again the Eternals fighting deviants and saving the world and a group coming together. Just your thoughts on that kind of opening sequence within this film. Um, it was different, different, it was different. <laughs> no, 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 it was different. And I was engaged, I was like, okay, Chloe's doing some great things here. Yeah, um, the team is together, and I was really interested in how she did that within the first like 10 minutes. So I'm like, if we're going to get something like this and see the team forming and you already saw that they were on location. And I think that the, the special effects were integrated quite nicely because they were shooting on location. So it's a, like, it looks clean at yeah. the beginning of this movie. So I, I love that you already see their, their, you know, the characters and their bond with one another. And then you see their powers and they look clean. Like it's polished. It was unique. And I, I like that vibe, but it also kind of felt rushed to get to certain points within the first 15 in my opinion but i was interested to see what she was going to do with it and she did catch my eye at the beginning of this yeah the opening is very it was uh again I, I don't remember if we ever correct me if i'm wrong an mcu film opening up like a star wars film where we get the scroll the kind of describing yeah. uh, celestials yeah. Yeah. and uh the eternals and i'm like okay this is this is interesting because it's a lot. We're going to get into this 10 yeah. new characters, whole new world. You know, there's yeah. no Disney Plus show to introduce us to. We, we're just literally jumping right in. So, I mean, Michael, mm -hmm. start kicking it off to you, man. Again, that opening scroll, meeting the Eternals, Icarus and Cersei, you know, that, that early love and them fighting for the first time. And we see them in action. Just your intake on that first, like I said, first, what was it, five, 10 minutes of uh, opening yeah. this film. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, it felt very Star Warsy. Mm -hmm. you know, I was just waiting for the dun, 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 yeah, yeah, you're dealing yeah. with the galaxy and, and and, and universal concepts with the celestials yeah. and everything like that. So you saw the crawl. I'm like, oh yeah, this is different. I don't think any Marvel movie yeah. has started like, which funny enough, they did tease that uh, Star Wars does is a comic book. In, in yeah. The, the, so the, much the, in this world. The, yeah. The coloring that book too. That, yeah. Like, which was reading it. Um, so, so yeah, it, it, it did feel different. Like, like just the, the whole opening sequence felt like the fact that it started on a, a action battle action, sequence and yeah. you got to see what <laughs> each Eternal is capable of. So I like mm -hmm. getting that out the way. Mm -hmm. uh, right off the bat, like it was a nice little action scene. Them fighting essentially glorified Pokemon, basically <laughs> cool. with 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 the, uh, with, with the deviants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like with them being on location and the, the special effects. Like I thought, it, I thought it looked good, and the music that was playing with it. Like, yeah, I had a, I had, a, I had a, uh, I had a good experience watching that yeah. opening scene. And then the second time I actually saw the movie, I saw it in uh, 4DX. Mm, and so you know, the seats. The seats yeah. are moving, and yeah. you're getting like sprayed with water, and wind is coming in. So oh, wow. it made it made that opening sequence. Uh, it made it fun. 
So, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the opening three quarters. Okay. Hey, Chris, man, same for you, man. As we get, like, as Michael just talked about that Star Wars scroll, uh, we meet the Eternals, we see them in action, uh, and we get our classic Marvel logo as we get the, the infamous kind of hero pose that we come to expect from the MCU. So, what was your take on just kind of being introduced to these characters and seeing them in action? I like the intro. I, I think the scroll was like, where these characters are so new, it's like, we, we can add 20 more minutes of this movie explaining this, or we could just drop this fucking quick little clip note so you guys can get caught up. So I was like, yeah. okay, I understand what's happening here. I thought it was a dope opening. Yeah. Um, a little bit of suicide squad, suicide squad vibes with just starting it, everyone out right, there just right, fighting right, right away. Around running. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like movies like that that just don't waste time. Um, yeah. Uh, I, th I thought it was really good. Um, I, kept, I don't know the story from the comics, so I kept, I was like, are they saying Sprite? Is her is her name Sprite? And I was like, "There's no way that they're saying Sprite. There's no no way." Yeah. Um, but her name is Sprite. That's it great. is. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I thought about the opening. No, and I'm I'm right there with you. I was, it, it did catch me by surprise. Number one, because uh, going into the film, I had heard, "Oh, there's not a lot of action. It's slow pace." I'm oh, it's, we start off with yeah. action. Scene. I wonder why you heard uh, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, okay, this is this is fun. And then again, seeing all them, you know, off top, seeing you know, we get the five intellect uh, uh, um, Eternals, and we get the five warriors, Athena kicking ass. We see you know Kingo and Icarus. Obviously, we're going to talk about. DC. I mean, literally, this felt like I was watching Justice League and watching Watchmen. Yeah. This felt more like a DC film than some DC films themselves. But you know, seeing them in action and, and meeting them was was a pretty cool way to open up this film. And I and I really from jump was like, I can't wait to learn more about these characters and their power skills, which kind of brings us into the present day time and, and, and Michael meeting uh, Mr. Kit Harrington. And, and I have to say, because I'm a Game of Thrones fan, just the fact that we saw. Richard Madden Richard and Kit Harrington, so John Stark and uh, you know my man, seeing each other, they're fighting for the heart of a character by the name of Cersei. So I, I just love that first yeah. and foremost. But meeting Kit Harrington, man, Dane, and seeing Cersei, that humanity, you know, she saves the little girl from the object falling on her. We get our first earthquake, uh, and, and we kind of see what's going on with humanity at that point. So just kind of being in the present day, uh, Michael, your thoughts on seeing again Cersei in action and meeting Mr. Dane, played by uh, John Snow. Uh, I like I like the two of them together. Their chemistry. I funny enough, I like the chemistry between Cersei and uh, Dane, of, yeah. then Dane Icarus. The mm -hmm. Yeah, then Icarus, then Icarus and Cersei. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the earthquake. As soon as the earthquake happened, because you know something you learn from Buffy, the Vampire Slayer. For the, all, all my Buffy fans, you, if, if there's an earthquake, there must be yeah. some type of apocalypse. Oh yeah, com of coming. Course, so of course. yeah, like you knew something. You knew something was going on. But yeah, yeah. like I I liked. Uh, Kit Harrington. I, I I knew he was gonna be playing Black Knight or eventually playing mm -hmm. Black Knight, mm -hmm. but I didn't know like the role he was gonna play yeah. in, in the film. But and so yeah, I just I just like I like the character. I liked and uh seeing them interact together and love I like it was believable. And uh funny enough, I'm, I'm gonna say I was like Kit Harrington was looking kind of nice in those uh khakis. I was like, look at that, <laughs> yes. that booty. You know, Very like, much so. Yeah. <laughs> and funny, I noticed that the second time watching, yeah. I was like, <laughs> that, that booty looking nice in those in those khakis. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, this whole cast is supermodels. Whole cast was super. That was like Facts. a requirement. They had to be uh, very attractive people. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he fit the, the bill true. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, kind of. I mean, just to kind of say, because he doesn't have a, a large role. So just to kind of no. go back to you, Michael, and then get it from uh, from Chris as well as Amanda. But just your thoughts on, on Dane Whitman's influence on the film. Did you expect more from Dane? Did you want more, or do you think it was a perfect amount of use for the character? Because again, as you mentioned, he will be a big character moving forward in the MCU as the Black Knight. Yeah, Kit Harrington, like when they announced that he was playing Black Knight, plus this is like Jon Snow. I thought he was gonna play a bigger role yeah. in the movie. But I guess now now that I've seen it and everything, like it, it is the eternal, like it's not really his story. Maybe he's right, gonna get right. his own like Disney Plus spin-off, especially we'll based find on, out the on post, Friday. Yeah, based on oh, yeah. the post credit so, scene and everything like that. Yeah. But I did I I, I do wish he was a little bit more involved, hmm. but I I don't hate what we got. What we got, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, Chris, tossing to you, man. Just again, your thoughts on seeing Cersei and, and her day to day action, her boyfriend Dane, uh, you know, seeing everything with the earthquake, and and of course, just your thoughts on Kit Harrington. If you're a fan of uh, of the actor and, and your thoughts on his role in the film, the little bit of the role that we got from him, but obviously the potential with the character could bring to the MCU in the future. 
Yeah, for sure. I'm not. I don't watch a lot of Game of Thrones, as you may know. I, so I, don't, I don't know this dude. What? It's just, sorry you to know this man. No, nothing. John I know Snow. nothing of this man. I, if they told me to, to tell me where this guy is from, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Pompeii. Um, that's what I was. That's what I was saying. Pompeii. No, like what? Not the first six seasons. What, what, don't what, what, ignore season seven and eight. Yeah. Also, just, I'm not. I'm, I, if not, I'm not watching it, but even, I'm not gonna not finish it. If I like, I'm not. Yeah, that you guy. have to. You're not gonna. All right, yeah. then. you're gonna get yeah. mad though. Whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. then, I, then I'm gonna get in the conversation. People like, how about the ending? And I'd be like, well, uh, Michael told me yeah. not to watch it, so I'm just, <laughs> I think it's great. No. Um, so, so, and I didn't know that. I didn't recognize that he was already like uh, cast as Moon Knight before. So I wasn't even thinking of it like that uh, when mm -hmm. I was watching. So I didn't need any more of him. You asked me mm -hmm. something else though before that about the scene. Oh, oh, um, Cersei in her regular day life gave me a lot yeah. of. Wonder Woman vibes, um, just her mm -hmm. like working at the Great art point. thing. So yeah. I had a lot of like parallels to that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people, I think they kind of complain about Cersei in this movie. I, I really love um, Gemma, Gemma. Um, mm -hmm. I really do like True. her. I think she was a little dialed down from when I wanted her to be compared to the, some of the other Eternals, but I still mm -hmm. liked her character. I just need yep. just a little smidgy smidge more, um, but still in, enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I really enjoyed Gemma's role. Uh, Cersei, just her, her humanity. Yeah, just I really rooted for her. And, and I do agree with you, Michael, just kind of thinking about the film. There was more chemistry to me with Dane yeah. and her versus you would think, what, 5,000 years with each other? They would have more chemistry than what we got. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what the future holds for them. But I, I totally, I, I thought Cersei was great. I really enjoyed her humanity that she brought to the role. And she just, she's a superstar. I, I loved her and everything I've seen her in. And I'm excited to get more for her in the future. I'm so happy that Marvel gave her a second chance because the little role she yeah. had in Captain Marvel was such wasted talent. Maybe this Marvel, we can get some other characters that were kind of wasted in the MCU to revise them. But before we kind of move on to the next question here, uh, or the next topic shout out to uh harley coming nice. in always showing some love uh with the 20 dollars super go. chat uh she says she enjoyed the movie wasn't the best for me but didn't uh didn't have a marvel movie feel to me which we'll talk about obviously but good uh mm -hmm. not in my top five glad to see the game for uh, uh michael here so definitely appreciate you and uh yeah we'll, we'll get into that obviously again not feeling like a marvel uh film which for some people like me, I was okay with that because I, you know, 26 mm. films. It's a lot of movies to in. keep doing. It's a lot. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But again, even though it was different, it might not have been that cup of tea for that for that particular person. They, you know, as that's far the thing as, I uh, understand like, about the complaints. People keep like, oh, it was so different. It was so different. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all been complaining about Marvel having the same formula the and same they finally do something thing. different. Yeah. And now you're like, yeah. oh, I don't like that. That's what I you agree. get for trying to please people. Look at Axel Mulan about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a whole yeah. But uh as far as so it going kind of a little bit back into the scene, we do see Icarus coming back fighting and and we get I don't want to uh bro go over uh Sprite who uh, just kind of going into Sprite starting with you Amanda. Did, did you feel mm -hmm. like that character again uh, and they even mentioned the Peter Pan comparison her being stuck into a Tinkerbell and Icarus which I found that love to be was it me or was it just kind of weird that it was it was a kid, <laughs> a kid performer in love with a girl. I don't know. Again, the optics seems a little weird, but I get where they were going yeah. from. Uh, <laughs> but just your thoughts on Sprite's through line. Did you feel like it was a character that you felt for and, and cared for by the end of the movie? She was fun. Mm -hmm. She was fun. I really liked her powers. Um, but at that point, like you saw at the beginning of the film when they went to the club, like she like evolved into an actual like human, like she turned into like someone yeah. older, right? Yeah. So for me, I, I think with that particular story with uh with Icarus, like she could have kind of changed again. That's like at the very anyways, that's yeah. a whole other situation. But like I just think that like that kind of love story between the two of them, I understood it. Um, yeah. I love the Peter Pan comparison. I like that entire um, connection, even with Kingo and Sprite. I thought that was really sweet, and that they, they like he knew her story. Um, but yeah, Sprite was a fun character. I, I wanted to see a bit more of her and what she could do. Uh, but like the projections and her powers, and like her connection with Cersei as well, and it's just mm -hmm. it's all very complex and complicated and all of that yeah. stuff. So, like Drama Island, it's great. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, she was she was fun. I have nothing like bad to say about her. Yeah, I, you know, she was interesting. 
So. Very, I mean, very low key ish, you know, to a certain mm-hmm. extent. Obviously, from a power standpoint, but also just from you know a sense of jealousy. You know, Thor yeah. was the the big brother and getting all the attention and Sprite. Yeah. It's like you guys get to live a life, and I get to be stuck yeah. in this body. But Chris, man, I know you talked about the being so surprised that her name was Sprite. Uh, but as far as the performance from the actress, the young lady, uh, and, and the character, did you did you root for the character? Do you want to see more from her? Again, her I assume, and we'll get to that point later on. But her powers are gone. Uh, so what does she bring to the table moving forward? But just your general take on the Sprite character. Yeah, she was my least favorite of the whole movie, easily. Um, in the beginning, I thought she was going to be cool because I like when yeah. they're running away from the Deviant and then this dude is like, I thought you guys yeah. killed all the Deviants. And then he's like, you told him that? He's like, you believe me? Like, I was like, oh, she's about to be like the cool little, like the quirky one that just tells all these crazy stories. Um, but then quickly... She lost all that magic, um, and then she she just lost me. I don't know. It was kind of weird that she like Icarus, but then even in the movie, it's like it, you, it didn't even act like you liked it, liked it, the yeah. guy until you know. Yeah, of course you follow him and stuff like that. Go ahead, Amanda, jump in. No, 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 no. I'm saying no. I was like agreeing with you in that case. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I I just didn't I just didn't feel it. I didn't. I was like, ugh, like you could have been like the character, like you could have been like the rocket, like just like the little like. You yeah. know, like the anti, yeah. like this is not gonna work. Yeah. This is a super yeah. plan. Like we all need that kind of character. Yeah. But she didn't. She didn't give me that, unfortunately. But mm-hmm. shout out to her. I don't want to be hating on no kid because like, I'm a grown up. But whatever. Hey. It's just a movie. I'm sure it's she's a nice it. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, again, we'll see if we'll get more of her again. Uh, you know, Young Avengers is something that we're looking forward to. I don't know if she can get into the mix, but Michael, your thoughts on on kind of Sprite, the love story that they kind of introduced in the film, uh, as well as you know, seeing Icarus back in the mix fighting the Deviants, uh, which we'll talk about the Deviants here in a second. I mean, I like Sprite, and uh, like it makes sense that her character is or became what she ended up becoming her the frustration building because yeah she got to see all these other people living a life she's been around for like a seven thousand years so like yeah she's in the body of a kid but mentally she's a grown-ass adult so like you know yeah. hormones and everything like that coming like she wants to she wants to have sex she wants to date and yes she can't right. like for seven thousand years, eventually somebody <laughs> you're gonna get frustrated. You, yeah, she, yeah. Wants, she wants to nut. She can't nut. Like, <laughs> of course you're gonna be. Of course you're gonna be upset. But I will say, how like, old is she supposed to be as a kid, though? Like, what age? Is she like four? No, is she, is she, supposed to be is she like twelve? Is it no, twelve to fifteen? Like, I think she's probably like fifteen. She's yeah. a teenager. She's so, a teenager, right? So teenager. like hormones, yes, it's understandable. <laughs> I get it. And it's Richard Madden. Yeah. So and that's what I was about to say too. Like Icarus, like who wasn't being who wouldn't be in love with Icarus? Like they were all in love with Icarus. Kingo was in love with Icarus. Like, yes, he was. Like, boss, I'm, gonna follow, um, I'm gonna follow you, boss. And, yeah. But, so I mean, I'm not. But I will say, like, I, I wish they kind of like foreshadowed a little. I feel like it just came yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, you're in love with Icarus. Yeah. Like, where did where, where did that come from? Like, where? Yeah. The build up so, wasn't. There, yeah, there was there wasn't yeah. there wasn't any build up, but like, yeah, I, ultimately, I had no problems with her character uh yeah. so I, I like sprite i would like to see more of her yeah. I, and I, and i like i love I'm, all of their powers like i like all of their power set the only thing i was like i feel like and maybe we'll get into this later i was like is it me or are the eternals in general like are they kind of they feel kind of weak as a, as a group or individually speaking like i feel both that, like yeah. if, if if say if like if it was the Eternals versus the Avengers, I feel yeah. like the Avengers will, will wash them. Really? Maybe 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 Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh, yeah. Dina, yeah, yeah. and and Icarus, but like the rest of them, yeah. like. Yeah, but it shows you in the end the fight scene. It shows you like what they really were about. Like, yeah. it, like it's not like even Makari is like coming through crazy. The whole the whole the whole movie, she's not doing anything really. Yeah, and they tell you like, oh, but I also can do this. Like, it's like I, I, I'm not watching Avengers. I mean, Avengers are not watching. Them. Well, we also didn't wow. see Mac- Macari had like the least amount of yeah, yeah. We'll get to her. Yeah, which yeah. I think was unfortunate because very cool set. Like seeing her, that so speedster, cool. like we never kind of seen before. And obviously some films, yeah. Quicksilver being an example, they kind of, you know, play within the slow motion. But seeing her leaping yeah. from continent to continent. Was, so was, was, yeah, 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 yeah. Go epic. find the, uh, go find cool. the source. Yeah. yeah, like Cersei, like she can do way like comic book Cersei rather. She she mm-hmm. can do way more than, than that, what the film gave her. Yeah, yeah so it was upsetting. Like when she was by herself trying to find, like, she can't do anything. Like yeah, she can't that's do anything. like she yeah. can't do anything. And like we saw that, and that upset me because I'm like she's really cool and she's playing it so reserved. And even her powers, you know what it, it is for me. Like looking at the power sets, it looked polished, and it mm-hmm. looked 
effortless. And I think that's why it didn't make an impact for me, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I don't know. I just felt like the powers, they're not weak, but it looks so clean that you don't feel it as much as like maybe like a punch or like Thor's like lightning strike. You know right. what I mean? Like it just feels. Yeah, I understand. Like, yeah, I like, they're, like, like they're not trying. Yeah. So yeah. That, yeah, exactly. Which no, I, I completely yeah. hear you. And, and they're not like discovering their powers either. Right. They, they're already, no. they're established. They have the powers yeah. that we, and it's kind of different again, going from different, we've yeah. never really come into an MCU film where these people are already who they are. We're not, it's the origins yeah. of the sense, but they're already established but, uh, in the but even with discovery and talking about foreshadowing and things like yep. that. I, I, yeah. I even feel like something that happened, the thing that happened with Cersei towards the middle of the movie, like none mm. of that, that came out of nowhere. And I feel yeah. like that didn't come into play even later. Mm -hmm. in the like when she changed the deviant oh it into like, a tree oh, that, yeah, yeah. into a tree it's like yeah, oh, yeah. i've never been able to do that and then that's true that's true where was the where was the tease for that happen? and then she yeah. never really she didn't really do it she didn't do it again not really no 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 so it was like so the, what was the point of introducing like i thought they that's were going to evolve and grow and become like more powerful and whatever but yeah that didn't happen We'll see. We will see more of these characters, hopefully, in the future. But I do want a quick uh, sitar there with, I don't know what that translates to, but uh, I appreciate the the, the donation there, a, my a friend. million dollars. A million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> we just cracked a, a million here on the channel. But again, thank you so much, man. And he has to say, I feel most... Um, most didn't get Eternals. Uh, people don't know the meaning of non sentient beings and uh, complain about the deviants being dumb. Deviants are meant to be pawns. Conflict with the yeah, and we'll definitely get into the deviants here. But again, so much uh, appreciation there on the, on the super chat. And a great question. We're going to definitely dive deep into the deviants not really being the villain of the story, uh, which is something yeah. that we saw from Marvel uh, in, in Phase One. But mm. kind of moving on to the rest of the film, kind of you know, so that's kind of the first the first half. We got to get the the group together after we pay a visit to. I'm not going to lie. I love Selma Hayek and I, and I really like the Ajax character and Michael, you can fill me in more on, on the comic book. And I, I believe it was a gender swap, right? From Ajax yeah. being a male character in the comics and obviously uh, Selma Hayek uh, being uh, obviously a female, but uh, we go to the ranch and we find out that she died. And this is where the group has to bring the band back together. And we'll talk about Kingo and all that stuff. But Amanda, your thoughts, are, number one, that scene, uh, I don't know. Obviously hindsight swing 20. Once that scene happened, I'm like, Oh, Icarus clearly did it. Because just his uh, emotion that he was playing in the scenes, like he clearly is the is, is the <laughs> the traitor of the group. But just your thoughts on how that scene played out. But more importantly, how did you feel about Ajax and, and Selma Hayek being the leader of the crew? So for me, I think the use of flashbacks and the way it was structured was the main struggle that I had, and it was all to set up Icarus and his storyline. And I think that's what kind of bothered me because that's why they used the flashbacks because you mm -hmm. saw that exact moment. Like you said, you kind of knew, and then obviously what had happened. Um, I personally think that they wasted Selma Hayek, and that upset me as well because I didn't think that she got enough screen time. And for her to be like the leader of all of this, it was effective up to a certain point. Like, I was more fascinated with the flashbacks, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Like, those scenes held emotional weight. You saw the connectivity between all of them, and I think that was really important. But each time it was like, I'm getting invested in these flashbacks with Ajak and then it takes you into present day. And it's like, you're taking me out of like that connection to these characters for some reason for me, because you keep flipping back and forth and taking yeah. away, um, you know, that connectivity because they're separated and they have to get the band back together. And it's a different type of connection now, considering what happened to Ajak. But yeah. um, for the screen time that Salma had, Obviously, she's a superstar. I loved mm -hmm. her maternal energy and that yeah. she was still stern with all of them and what she had to do with Arisham. Um, but yeah, I just I think she was underused, unfortunately. Um, and I yeah, that's that's what I gotta say. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. As far as a leader, the maternal aspect was there for me. The leadership yeah. aspect there was there for me. But the present day stuff, we obviously didn't get much of it because the present day we just see essentially a flashback of her dying what happened with Icarus yeah. but then obviously a lot of stuff was her flashbacks at the time uh, but Chris man your thoughts on on that leadership aspect did, did you enjoy the character again Selma Hayek she you know these actors uh, you know sometimes slip up we all know at this point Marvel signs these actors to four or five movies and she said you know oh I've signed to do more movies so and also the film lets you know these Eternals are built they're robots so we're going to probably see them in the future but just your thoughts on Ajax in this film and did you feel that leadership from the character Ajax that's a cleaning solution by the way 
<laughs> hey Jack, I hey, thought Jack. I agree. I agree. I agree with you guys wholeheartedly about the character. I didn't. I didn't love her. You know, she looks amazing for being. I don't even want to know how old she is. Yeah, oh, I've but, always had the biggest crush on her since Desperado. Oh, queen, nice. a queen. Yeah, yeah, she was definitely a queen. I wanted yeah. more out of her when she hit Icarus with that. Um, I didn't ask for your opinion. Don't forget your place. Like yeah. that moment yeah. when she put yeah. him, when she when she humbled him, and he's supposed mm -hmm. to be the Superman. I, I needed more of those type of moments, but we didn't get a lot of it. But the, like you, like you guys said, the flashbacks really really carried her. So yeah, that's how I feel about it. Toss into you, Michael. Your thoughts on this character? Uh, and again, knowing your comic book knowledge as far as the uh, translation from comics to, to the big screen, how'd you feel about the character? Well, uh, with with the whole comics and 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 the uh, camaraderie between the two, like funny enough, they swapped. Now Ajax is a woman. And, and the oh, costume, really? it was re resurrected. Like they're trying to make it more like it did the same thing with Macari. Macari yeah. was a guy. Now mm -hmm. Macari is a woman. So to, to make it more, uh, sometimes I hate when they do that. But then sometimes I'm like, all right, whatever. Yeah. But <laughs> but as far as as far as the movie, like I I do wish we got more from from uh, Selma Hayek's character, especially with her being the leader of the Eternals. And then not only just that, but the fact that she knew everything that was going on in terms of the celestials and the yeah. emergence and she's been doing this she said for millions of years i would like mm -hmm. to have seen like or get more from her perspective and maybe her psyche and 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 everything that she had to go through and maybe she, maybe she had connections on those other plants like yeah we didn't really get anything from her yeah. in terms of a character just we need to yeah. do this and like so like i would like to have gotten more from her and then like I do kind of feel like like a lot of the flashbacks were kind of jarring. Like they and, and they kind of relied very heavily too much it. on those flashbacks. And I feel honestly, yeah. I feel like the flashbacks in and of itself could have been a whole nother movie. Like yes, yes, it's a great point, man. It could have been a Disney Plus series or whatever just yes. on the flashbacks. Just on the, yeah, because yes. like, like and, and and in some ways, I felt like it was a very Eurocentric aspect of the flashbacks because. You, you have like Asian Eternals, but we didn't see anything of what happened in Asia or Africa. Like, but we I really saw thought they like, were going to go to the pyramids and explain who really built them. Um, yeah, but, we, didn't, yeah. We, didn't, we didn't see anything like what was what was yeah. what was uh, what was fast those doing during slavery? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> building the Underground Railroad. Yeah, like, like, we, didn't, we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't see anything. Yeah, like, I, I would like to have seen more. Like, like I said, I would like to have seen more of the fleet covering seven thousand years of history. Yeah. Like, that's a mm -hmm. lot. To sure. try to cover in a two and a half hour movie, and so yeah. I would have liked to have seen. Like, I feel like probably this will work maybe better as a Disney Plus show. Oh yeah, that yeah. is a question I definitely have towards the end in regards to just um, that very thing that you brought up, Disney Plus or a movie. Um, but um, oh yeah, to answer your question, yeah. I, I would like to have seen more of Ajax. I love Salma Hayek. Yeah, yeah, she looks she looks great. She Thank does, and, and, and <laughs> I think it's safe to say we're gonna probably get more of it, which. That's another conversation in regards to states <laughs> and when, when characters die and you know can always get bring them back whether it's yeah. multiverse or now obviously Eternals being robots and just yeah. recharge and put another one out there which I guess the sequel we, we can see the evil version of that character maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk about sequels uh, at, at the mm -hmm. end of it but you got you, Michael you mentioned flashbacks I would be remiss to to not bring this up because uh, this is the first of the MCU uh, the sex scene. Uh, right, uh, Amanda. Again, I remember. I totally forgot. What, uh, they talked about the intimacy and obviously Chloe having that type of sensibility as a director. But I forgot that it was going to be a sex scene in the film. Which, let's be honest, a sex scene compared to other stuff that we see in the film, it was very Disney-fied. But nonetheless, it was there. Your thoughts on? The, and again, we'll talk more about the story. But I just had to bring it up. The sex scene, Amanda. We, we get Icarus. We get Cersei, and it's, it's you know two naked people, and uh, you know, and it, it, as the scene played out. But just your thoughts on it, Amanda. First of all, <laughs> first of all, Richard Madden and Gemma Chan are freaking gorgeous. Both yeah. of them, they are gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the first thing. <laughs> Second of all. I did not buy their connection whatsoever. Yeah. <clears throat> they had zero chemistry, okay? I'm sitting there. These two have been in love, got married for freaking 5,000 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. or so, and I didn't feel that? I didn't feel that connection at all. Like, that's crazy to me that you don't feel anything, like no chemistry whatsoever. I felt more chemistry with Thena and Gilgamesh. Oh yeah, like genuine love and respect there. Hell, uh, the Druid and uh, Macari, and, and Druid yeah. and Macari, like those 
like best couples in the whole thing. I yeah. wanted to see more of them. I could care less about Icarus and Cersei. I'm sorry. I could care less about both of them together. Individually, sure. But together, that sex scene was emotionless. It was cringe to watch. <laughs> okay, they're on the sand. And it's like the weirdest like framing of this sex scene. It's so like, what was the point of even putting it in there? There was no point. They were it's giving spicy, me nothing. I, I know it's PG-13, <clears throat> but something. Like, you didn't even feel love between them. And, like, that's that's what really just hurt that <laughs> thing for me. I'm sorry. I'm rambling because, like, I'm a, I'm huge on chemistry. Yeah. Especially on screen. Like, Oscar Isaac and Jessica Ch Chastain have more chemistry on oh, that red carpet on. gift yeah, that yeah, we yeah. saw. Oh, and yeah. it seems from a marriage than, like, that five-second <clears throat> sex scene. So, I yeah. just think that that's what really hurts my connection to the two of them and yeah. then their love story transcending the like centuries. So that's, that's what I got to say. And I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I, hey, you said it well. And, and I mean, Michael, man, your whole mantra is blood, sex, and, and you know, magic. We didn't get any blood in this film. There's a little bit of magic, but we got a little bit of sex. We got a little bit of sex, Michael. Uh, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this uh, first official? I know people are like, oh, what about Iron Man 1? He slept with the reporters. Like, nah, that was, nah, that would really, but. No. Time we, we see uh, they were, they were, they were, they were <laughs> naked. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, Chris Pratt, too. And Chris, oh, the yeah. very true, yeah, with the, the lady uh, in this oh, bit. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I yeah, blocked that you, out. You, you, didn't, you didn't see it. Yeah, we know but, nothing. Yeah, no skin, no skin. I mean, yeah, I, like I said, <laughs> I feel like the chemistry between uh, Gemma Chan and Kit Harrington was much better. Yes. But for the sake of it, like, I didn't hate the sex scene. I was actually glad that they put it in there because I'm just like, they, These characters are human. Humans have sex. Like, don't be like DC with the whole Batman doesn't go down on Catwoman. Like, boo. yeah, that, <laughs> that, that whole thing. Like, oh, superheroes yeah. don't do that. Like, right. no, right. make it more realistic. Like, and that, then I was like, oh, like for Disney to actually be putting this in their movies, I feel like it's a made, it's a big step. So that's why I appreciate it. I appreciated it from that aspect and the fact, because yeah. I'm like, yeah. I feel like we as a society, we we live in a society, Jared Leto, but I feel like we as a society are more prone to like let kids see violence and- Deadpool, and take your kids yeah, to see Deadpool. Take your kids yep. to see Deadpool. I yeah. saw kids in Suicide Squad, uh, yep. the Suicide yep. Squad, James Gunn, which is hella rated R, where mm -hmm. we're allowing mm -hmm. kids to do that. But then if you see a sex scene, which is more natural, every, you know, unless you're asexual, mm -hmm. everybody's having sex. Yeah. like. People are like, oh, no, kids can't see that. Yeah. But you can see somebody getting decapitated. I'm like, I think it's a very backwards yeah. very mentality. Much so, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah, the fact that they included this scene, like, I was like, oh, yeah, like, uh, Cersei and Icarus are getting it in. Like, Disney's putting this in there? Like, whoa, like, what? what is happening? So, I'm, yeah, yeah I, I appreciate it just from that from, from that aspect. No, I agree. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I gotta leave Chris, man. Your thoughts on this? Uh, again, it was quick. Uh, I don't know if that speaks to Icarus uh, skills, uh, but uh, your thoughts yeah, on uh, good job like, with that man. joke. Was this <laughs> the first job. time as an eternal they've ever had sex? Like, I don't know, you know, yeah. bad sex exists, so maybe <laughs> great joke, fantastic timing. That was great. <laughs> your thoughts on this, my friend? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't care about it because I didn't realize, I, I didn't know that there was a hype before the sec before the movie came yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. I didn't realize that it, I'm watching a Disney movie. I, I didn't put it together. I just thought, okay, yeah. I, I see this is happening yeah. in front of me. I don't, maybe because maybe some of the chemistry flaws between Icarus and Cersei are because her and Dane connected so quick for us in the movie. Yeah. So we're just kind of like we're, we're already processing that. Like, okay, that's really cute. Yeah. And then the kids are making a thing about it, and they're you know they want to move in together. And we were like, oh, we're bought into it. Then Icarus flies in out of nowhere. And we're like, ah, we have no room for you here. Um, I thought it was a little bit kind of decent chemistry on the plane on on, on my man's jet. Yeah. Um, flirting about the, the app and looking old and all that. But overall, yeah, the sex scene you asked me about, you know, I love a good sex scene. So I guess that's cool that they're there, but it wasn't yeah. steamy enough. But I don't fucking watch Marvel movies for the steam, unfortunately. Come that's perfect. It ain't never there. It's never there. We're it gonna never there. start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Hey, Psycho Waititi, uh, Love and Thunder. I I'm exactly. expecting. Let's we'll see what we get with that. Film. And also, this I know we're guy. super jumping ahead, but you know, the dude, uh, my man Thanos' brother, apparently he's the playboy of the MCU. So, really, hopefully, that's when we really get some real smashes. There you so go. We shall see. <laughs> One direction. Not with him, though. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we'll see what the future. Arrows, right? Watermelon sugar high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> we'll see what it holds. But I mean, uh, perfect segue, Chris, because we're actually let's get into uh, Kingo, played by the incredible Camille Nagiani. And uh, starting with you, Amanda, we we mm-hmm. first off, MCU comedy is very subjective. We talked about it with uh, Chung Chi, how yep. I wasn't a fan of Trevor's inclusion in that film, and just the, the jokes fell completely flat for me with that particular character, and spent so much time on it, but. You get an actor who's known for comedy, and, and not everyone was being funny. I know that's some of the criticism with the mm-hmm. Guardians, at least Guardians 2, that it was like too many jokes and everyone was funny. Uh, but this one, it was like, you know, Kingo, he's the funny guy, and he's the Hollywood star or the Bollywood star, and that whole sequence. And by the way, I think we, we I would be completely remiss to not bring up the MVP of the film, uh, his uh, his valet uh, character. Yeah, yeah let's who talk just, about it. Yeah. stole yeah. the movie Caron yeah. was my man give him a Damn. Disney Plus show on Hell documenting yeah. him and Lewis can we get him and, and Luis in the same yes. room uh, from Ant-Man <laughs> and just documenting everything with the MCU but <laughs> Amanda your thoughts on Kingo the jokes the vampire joke which now kind of comes together uh, mm-hmm. a little bit later on in the film but your thoughts on the introduction to Camille Nagiana because we're now like in the second half of the film at this point yeah um I really liked Kingo. I didn't love him because I feel like Kumail was really trying to make these jokes land <clears throat> and no one around him was giving anything. Like even to point. bounce off of other than Karun, like obviously he made me laugh more than Kumail did to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest. But they were bouncing off of each other. But the humor when kingo was with like other people it just did not hit and some jokes did not land i didn't laugh every Mm. single time that kingo said something but he was still enjoyable like and entertaining um i personally think that kumail did a better job with the more serious moments like if he was talking to sprite or talking to icarus Yeah. Yeah, yeah so i think that those intimate honest moments that's where kumail really shined and it wasn't mm-hmm. just only the humor but like mcu jokes fam like, gotta get them gotta put them in gotta there. get them in do they land no maybe you'll do the <laughs> that was a good one but you're not like downright like laughing in my, like that's yeah. just the way that i took it but kumail was like stellar yeah, no, I, I, the one thing that I thought was kind of hilarious, because the, the big thing with Kamel Nagiani was the, two years ago, he put up the Hugh Jackman workout photo, and uh, we, we didn't get it. Was the muscles was, even I'll, needed? Keep, keep taking my thoughts. Like, <laughs> was the muscles even I was there, Michael? Let me get a, get a shirtless thing. Like, like Jack show. And then I mean, my the, man, Chris Hemsworth, he gets shirts one, every, yeah, yeah, every Avenger. This one. Like, no, what, was, what was the point of him doing all that workout? You didn't even sit. I mean, you just got to see the arms, but like, yeah, yeah no, no shirtless, no shirtless, man. I mean, Michael, your thoughts on the character yeah. as a whole, Kamel's comedy beats, the the power scale of the character, and just your overall thoughts on him and the valet, which kind of stole the the funny beats for me in the film. Uh, yeah, I like Kingo, and uh, and of course, you know, Karun, like that's the yeah. MVP of the whole of the whole show. And the thing <laughs> I like about I like about Kingo is like, and, and uh, to 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 uh be the opposite of what Amanda was saying. I like the fact that Kingo was more of the jokey person, but then everybody else was more serious. Like it gives them like the straight man. Because the thing I hate about the MCU is like, yeah, like everybody has to be funny. Everybody has to throw jokes. And for the most Mm -hmm. part, they didn't do that in this movie. Like there were other characters that tried to do a joke, but not really, like it didn't didn't necessarily land. But the fact I liked it didn't land because they're not the funny cat. That's not their personality. Mm -hmm. But Kingo, not every joke, Mm -hmm. you know, I laughed at or was, chuckle you know i chuckled and it was super hilarious but like yep. it was still his personality like even a person that's jokey not every joke that they say oh comedian not every joke that they give is funny so i'm yep. you know i didn't have a problem with not every joke landing but like yeah i, I liked his character i liked his power so i like how like despite living for seven thousand years he still had a, a huge like love of life and, yep. and everything yeah. like that so i like I, yeah I, I just like the juxtaposition of the different personalities for all that i mean for the most part yeah i like all i, I, I ended up liking all all of the eternals overall mm-hmm. no just, i agree man like I, was, I just wish makari got more to do <laughs> we'll get to makari Same. she was Same. she was left on the cutting room floor i would imagine but yeah chris your thoughts on mr camille uh his character and his valet his presence of the film him knowing thor um, you know, him yeah. being a Bollywood star, his great, great, great grandfather, that whole shtick I thought, you know, was just an interesting character. And let's be honest, the man, he he dipped out on the Eternals at the end of the film too, which I thought was kind of weird, but yeah. <laughs> your thoughts yeah. on this character, man, and uh, your overall film on him. Yeah, I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of Camille. I, I tell you guys right. all the time, I, I love all of his stuff. I told you, we talk about Men in Black 3 or, or 4, actually, the movie is so fucking terrible, but he's fucking, he's <laughs> epic in that, in that movie. Yeah. 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 He's so good. And, you know, 
Stuber, anyone watching, watch a good the big movie sick, that man. no the one ever watched. Big, big Sick is big crazy. Sick is crazy. Oh, and Big Holy Sick, when he goes, oh, oh, what are your thoughts on 9 11? He's like, we lost some of the best. Of That's one of the funniest men. jokes. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I love, I do love Kingo. And I, and like, to Amanda's point, I love when he got serious, but I love when someone who's funny could get serious too. So yeah. I, I thought yeah, the yeah. jokes were funny, yep. but it was also dope that he could get serious because, like, someone like Ryan Reynolds, like, when Deadpool gets serious, it's like we don't give a fuck. But like we don't, we're not trying to hear that. It's not, it's, yeah. you're, not even, you're not even doing it right. Um, love uh, this it blows the deviant head off. Did you get that, Karun? The, the banter is crazy. The, the, my favorite line, maybe of the whole movie, is I, I directed some stuff too, and he's like, "How many views did you get?" It's not, I don't do it yeah, for I'm the not, views. Not doing <laughs> <laughs> best, best, best lines, best line of the movie. I thought he was really funny. Um, yeah. Florence took my took the title of funniest in the mcu after black widow mm. um but he, he he's here he's here to hold it down um but i, I loved everything that he did in the, in the movie i mean in the ending i did i was like where did he go he dipped. Yeah. Um, he's yeah. making a movie so that's that's movie. weird but uh yeah. i was like this is this is good like he's still yeah. he's still bad in a hundred for me or a thousand i should say he's bad in a thousand hey, for man me. i need to see kingo and uh, uh somewhere with thor somewhere and having yeah, it i want to see i want to see that flash them go back and forth because he said he knows thor so let's let's see how yeah. that how that yeah. works out uh but camille no he's great and again i do feel like at least with hugh jackman like the man put in the work and we, and we didn't see he didn't have a, a chris evans holding a helicopter he wasn't holding a deviant i guess we gotta wait for the sequel i guess that's uh you know that's what we gotta look forward to but kind of moving on we, we get the band we got a little bit uh you know at this point we're getting we got kingo we got everyone on the band uh, on the the band back but now let's talk about the two epic warriors and that's Thena and gogamesh which i believe all of us have said that their chemistry uh, Don Lee, first off, uh, incredible actor. So glad an American audience gets to see him. If you guys haven't seen some of his films, and particularly like Train of Bustan, great actor. Angelina Jolie. Um, I was I was thinking I'm that this was yeah. going to be her movie. She's the biggest, if we're being honest, she's the biggest star out of the entire cast. But she was able to play a supporting cast member, which really surprised me. And her story mm -hmm. with the memory loss. And, 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 and I guess... Starting with you, Amanda, was yeah. it a romance between Gilgamesh and, and Thena, or was it just a, an understanding warrior carrying them, being there for the person, or was it an actual romance, do you think? I think that they understood each other the most out of everyone, and that's why they're that close. As I said before, there's a genuine love and respect for the warrior aspect of both, like of each of them, <clears throat> and they understood each other. So I don't think that it's like they're in love. I think it's like I've known you for so long yeah. and I appreciate you and I'm going to be here for you. And like, that's the love that's there between the two of them. Um, I absolutely adored Angelina Jolie as Thena. She's, She's my favorite eternal to be perfectly honest. I love, you know, her power sets, uh, her costume, everything. The blonde hair actually really suits her and she looks bomb. Um, so that was good. Uh, but I really loved her backstory. I think she had one of the best arcs. She's a very complex character. And um, yeah, I, I just really connected with her. She's the one that made me cry. I did get emotional with Ina and I got emotional with uh, with Gilgamesh and, you know, again, their chemistry, their friendship, whatever you want to call it. I do think that there was like so so many things that they could have done with both of them as well, but they still yeah. played that set, the supporting character quite well. Mm -hmm. Um, but they stole it for me. Like I still yeah. think about like Gilgamesh and like, I still think about Thena and like what they did in Eternals. So both of them were really strong and I love them. I mean, if, if it isn't romance, I mean, that's the world's longest friend zone that uh, Gilgamesh offered to her, yeah. which is, is history. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, something we got to appreciate from them, too. But, Chris, man, your thought on, on, on the two, uh, if you felt it was romance or just the respect between the, the two warriors. And, uh, again, just your thoughts on the performance, individually speaking. And uh, Thena, who's essentially the Wonder Woman of the group, uh, badass warrior, but has a lot of heart and empathy as well. Yeah, so we got a... Uh... Chris Tate agreeing with Amanda alert. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Thena, Thena was my favorite eternal for, in this movie. Um and I, I didn't expect it. And I didn't I didn't think that she would be the lead of the movie, like you said, E. Yeah. But I thought she would be kind of whack because she's just a big name. I thought Such she would dial it in mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. kind of just be like, I'm just here because I'm, I'm Angelina Jolie. But disrespect, that was all on my part. That's all my fault. 
I just respected her. Hey. Um, she came, she came so correct. There's so many different little nuances yeah. that she was doing, like on the yeah. low, like even at the end when she's about to fight Icarus, like the, the lean off the off the wall, like just mm-hmm. ah, epic. Mm-hmm. This little small little things. I love. Her. I didn't think that they were in love. I think he was in love, and she was friend zoned him because I think if they were in love, they would have showed a little smoochy smooch at the end, right before he before took the L him. for him. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it's a really a, a testament to nice guys out there. He's still finishing <laughs> last. Well, we are still finishing last. Just <laughs> let that be a lesson to you. You you can die for goddesses and get nothing. Um, but it's like, how are you going to live alone for so long? They could no. have done some shenanigans. Some you don't know. Some you don't know. Yeah, so they could have done no, stuff. They, if, they gonna, if Disney's going to give me sex on the beach, no alcohol in, in, included, yeah. they're going to give me a little smooch between Dean and something. Gilgamesh. I oh, think gosh. I think he was, uh, was feeling her and she was like, Oh, he's my big bro. And yeah. it's sad to see. Yeah. But Athena's still my favorite. She's still my favorite. She but then awesome. that leaves room for me to slide in there. Ah, there Aeros. you go. Before, see? before no, Aeros that's the, that's the, It's right. a win win. That's, that's the alternative motive there. But again, I th- I can't remember. It was some review I saw, and I was like, yeah, that's a great comparison. It was they compared uh Angelina and Joe Lee as uh to Will Smith and Suicide Squad, where it's like Will Smith's the biggest star of the entire cast, but he yeah. was able to play that side. He was yeah, he was a big character in that film, but he was also able to play that mm-hmm. supporting cast member, which I thought mm-hmm. Angelina did a great job in doing so. But tossing it to you, Michael Man. Athena, Gilgamesh, their 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 bond, uh, you know, going out to Australia, seeing where she's at and everything in that film. How did you feel about those two characters? It looks like we're about to form the Unimind here on the we movie do, we are, uh, <laughs> track because we're three for three. <laughs> Athena, <laughs> is Athena is my favorite Eternal as well. Woo! And it's crazy because, yeah, like when Angelina Jolie was, I was like, Angelina Jolie, yeah. like she's going to take, take over. The whole movie. It's, her, it's basically her movie. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. she's the biggest person. She's the biggest yeah. cast member on the show. And I, I, I just thought it was just going to be, like her movie and her focus and everything like that. But yeah, like she was a great side character. I loved her character. And like, I personally, I, I don't, I don't know why the movie didn't confirm either way, whether they were in love or not. But me personally, I think they were together. I think they were lovers just because of all the things and references and callbacks that you would think of like a romance subplot that they had with the two of them. Like literally Gilgamesh is the reason that she remembers. Gilgamesh is the one that was keeping her together. They were, they basically lived together for thousands and thousands of years. No different Mm -hmm. than Icarus and Cersei. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like a lot, a lot of the hints, like tell me they, they love each other. Like, yeah. I, I, but yeah, I don't know why. Why, like I said, I don't know why it didn't confirm either way. But like, yeah, even even her taking out the uh, the deviant at the end was all because of Gilgamesh. Like, yeah, she found her strength through him. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's love. Any other movie, it's it's a romance subplot. Like, yeah, I'm gonna so. cry again. I'm gonna literally just cry and again. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sad. I'm, yeah, I'm sad. Gilgamesh was gone, gone too soon. He's like my second favorite. He was awesome. Yep. He, he, he threw them hands, man. And, and again, I'm yes. assuming we're going to see them again, just for the simple fact that we know that they're manufactured out of, 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 a, of a factory, essentially. essentially. So we might get Gilgamesh and Thena reunion, but it might be, again, I think we're going to see a sequel where these characters are going to be battling each other uh, just due to the fact that uh, you know, it's going to be different and their memories will be wiped. But um, Gilgamesh, yeah, he, he was fantastic. Again, Don Lee and, and Angelina, again, I, talk about Disney Plus. I would love to see that story of the characters throughout the you know the years of them yeah. uh, in their little hut and in their lives and how they uh, live life and stuff like that. So it would be really interesting to see what comes of those characters moving forward. But this is the big part that I wanted to talk, talk to you guys about. And everyone in the chat, again, thanks. And a quick shout out to Ease Kane with, uh, with the super chat. Uh, didn't like the flashbacks and how to flow, but I enjoyed the film. Uh, Eternals felt weak till the ending. Feels like a big setup movie, 7 out of 10. Uh, you know, Lovely, appreciate that. Fair, fair rating. Yeah. Great yeah. fair rating. Yep, 100% agree. And thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. Uh, but, uh, man, I want to kick this off with you. So, film like this, we expect uh, exposition because it's, it's Eternal Ten characters, Celestials, Deviants, a lot to take in. This was one of my biggest flaws in the film. I felt like it could have been sprinkled in a little bit better, but we get like a history lesson in the middle of the film, uh, kind of in that second half. And essentially, we we get the big twist that 
celestials have created the Eternals to or to the Eternals to protect Earth from the Deviants, which we learned the Deviants became the as the film points out very early the the, uh, the predators, the predators, uh, the apex predators, and and we were sent there to fight off the Deviants. But they're sent there to do that because they want to plant the celestial eggs to grow and and all that stuff. And there's so much to dive into the emergence and being yeah. reset and the factories and all that stuff. But my thing was, and, 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 and it's been a conversation I've seen on many different platforms, but I thought about it as soon as I watched the film. The, the Thanos conversation, I still don't get why they weren't able to step in with Thanos, considering that they had to stop, <laughs> that Thanos took out, the, interfered with the plans. I know nice. Michael knows Thanos is a half deviant, half you know uh, 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 eternal in the comics, and we haven't gotten his like full family tree in the MCU quite yet. But I was just so like, what? Why wasn't that? That doesn't make sense that they weren't able to step in. But either taking that away, what did you think about that that exposition and how they gave it to us in, in the film? It's I was I, I you explained it to me right now, and I still have no idea what the hell like any of it mean. Like I get it because they showed it at the same time, but yeah. in that little like nugget of Cersei like figuring this out, like for me, there wasn't any shock value until they got to like the fact like the emergence is about to start and like x amount of time like it's starting whatever yeah. blah, blah, blah like that's when i got it i was like oh wait damn like this is about to happen but yeah. the rest of it that shock value for me that wasn't warranted for cersei to find out in that way and then have everything turn upside down for the second half of this movie it was too much yeah. it was way too much um it was fine for the i guess for the way they did it i mm -hmm. just think that it was rushed and they were like packing it in and i just wish they executed it differently that's it i feel like if it I was agree. a bit more clear and it was spread out a bit more or like yeah. it was ajak who kind of expressed it and she gave the history lesson and like she's the one that said it i think it would have hit different than cersei getting like all this information at once because yeah. it just didn't hit the same way it was a lot to take in. Like I said, that was just the half of it. Again, we learned about the reboot system. Again, the emergence. We're, we're creating the new Celestial, uh, which made me think of Ego, the Living Planet. Wasn't he putting eggs across yeah. in the in the in the planet? So wouldn't Ego have been having issues with the judge? But Michael, man, what was your thoughts of this moment? And again, learning about the the secret plans of Celestials, and, and it's really the conflict of the film, which was one of the reasons I liked about the film. It's it's kind of the Thanos conversation. They're taking away life to create more life which is a yeah. whole you know dilemma of just you know mm. just thinking about life in general and, and the headiness of all of that but just your thoughts on how they delivered that uh the celestials planting eggs to create more celestials all that stuff i didn't necessarily have a problem with that yeah. mostly because that's comic book accurate that's right. what they do all right mm. but i think my biggest issue with the eternals film in general is just less so what they presented and more so what they didn't present and the questions that they didn't answer, especially considering like the trailer that they, they showed with like uh, when Thanos snapped out half the population, yada, 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 like, and knowing that Thanos is an eternal with the DV and G, like I thought that we, we were going to get more of an explanation of that. And we didn't get yeah. anything, especially yeah. when they released like a whole press release saying like, Oh, Thena is, is Thanos's cousin. Right. No, no reference to that. Even when she met Eros at the end with the post credit scene, it was kind of like, oh, that's Thanos' brother. That's your cousin, too. She was yeah. kind of like, who the hell are you? Like, so, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. a lot of questions. Even when it was like, oh, how come you didn't intervene with Thanos? We're only supposed to intervene when deviants is invo are involved. Thanos is a deviant. So that doesn't make any sense. Like, and then also, like... <clears throat> Again, I think about like the future and the because I'm like with the eternal with the celestials and them planting the eggs and everything like that. Like I I'm thinking about the, the the like how does this connect, especially with the eternals being uh basically robots essentially, which is not yeah. what they are in the comics. In the comics, mm -hmm. celestials are just another form of human. They came to Earth, mm -hmm. they experimented on humans, and they created the eternals out of humans, they created the deviants. And then they also created the X-Men. But if you're saying that the Eternals are robots, I'm trying to figure out how is that going to introduce, because I thought like you're introducing a Celestial. That's yeah, the perfect I, I, way to yeah. introduce mutants. Yeah. Like, are yeah. you going to tell me that mutants That's are robots thinking. now? Like, how does... Um, well, please don't. Please yeah, don't. Yeah, like, <laughs> how is how is that going to work? And then, yeah. like, we know Galactus is coming. Oh, yeah. And he's he's, a, like he's a planet like, eater. He likes to yeah. absorb energy. And, which, and yeah. the way they kind of explained, like, the uh, the Celestials, they make it seem like they're a necessary aspect of the of the cosmos. Yeah. But 
-hmm. in the in the comics the way it's explained is galactus is more so the yin to their yang like mm. galactus destroys planets to prevent yeah. celestials from so they're not overrunning the entire universe and that's right. why his purpose of destroying planets is to more or less quell the celestials so like if you're saying the celestials are needed then how would that explain like what's galactus i don't know i'm just i'm getting it's, i know i'm getting hey. too nerd, too <laughs> nerd i'm, I'm just it. sitting here like michael i love it <laughs> Yeah. But I'm like, but I know, but because I know these concepts are coming, I'm like, yeah. how do you explain? Yeah. yeah. So I think that was my biggest issue with the movie, like things that they didn't explain. Even with like Thanos yeah. talked about how, oh, most of my kind was wiped away. And that's yeah. why I'm on this vendetta to re uh, remove half the population. Yeah. But I'm like, but your brother's still alive. Your cousin's still alive. Your other. So like, explain it to it's me. Like, yeah. it's it's yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you, man. And, and again, the whole Galactus conversation is something I thought about too. And it, it, it's still conflict that would be had if he wants to destroy planets and absorb planets. You know, that's still a, a way to bring that character in. But again, I was just constantly thinking about the Thanos thing. It's like, but again, the more I thought about it, and I don't know if this, the movie obviously didn't say this, and who knows what what a future can hold for Thanos, but with him, you know, obviously evaporating half of uh, everything around the world, the whole idea of them snapping them back obviously kickstarted the emergence probably hundreds of years before because it seems like the celestials they're they're fine and waiting they can wait millennials before the emergence actually happens so they were patiently waiting so i guess the thanos doing what he did actually helped them out but again they're not which don't even get me started on timelines and time variances like they can't see the future so they wouldn't have known that the avengers were going to snap people back so i don't know uh chris man your thoughts on the emergence exposition dump this yeah. whole situation with the robots and, and the deviants and just how you took it all in, my friend. Yeah, well, I, I didn't know that Thanos was a deviant, and I don't think the movie treats him as one because then if, if they don't, then for them to not intervene against Thanos would make sense because they're not supposed to intervene unless it's a deviant. You're right. So they don't know that they're, supposed, they're just protecting humans to create the energy to start this emergence. They just know that they're protecting uh humans from eternal from from deviants deviants yeah yeah and that's it so that's that's why they i think that's why they tried to get ahead of it by saying why don't you all step in for Thanos? well we're not supposed to intervene with until we know we the audience yes. knows the yeah. real story we would think okay cool that that is slowing down the energy that's slowing down the population um so that's why i didn't i didn't give it a hard time but if he's a deviant yeah. then whatever that but that's something i didn't know as a as a as a viewer which i don't think and we don't it's MCU not even official yet in the mcu yeah, yeah the mcu yeah, hasn't said that yet well yeah. he's an he's an eternal with a deviant mutation so yeah. that's why eros an eternal is his brother but he Looks and that's yeah. why he's purple because he right. has a deviant mutation so okay, technically okay, thanos okay. is a mutant more or less Okay, that makes the sense. The more you say sense. mutants, Michael, the more I can. The, yeah, literally, I like, thought this film was going to introduce like, a mutant, but yeah. <laughs> or like a hint, or like a hint Something. to it. But then, like, like Something. I said, the fact that they made Eternals robots, I'm like, kind of, yeah. How does that? How does that explain mutant? Like, I hope they don't say the mutants are robots too. Dude, don't even put that out there. Again, Michael, the Celestials created the existence. mutants, so yeah. yeah. They need to hire you, Michael. Please fix everything. Please fix it. <laughs> fix it all. But Chris, do, you, do you have any more insight, man, on, on again, the whole uh, uh, exposition that we got there? And again, I can't remember uh, the, the the celestial that was born in this film, um, Tormod Tiamat. or Tiamat. Tiamat. Uh, Tiamat yeah. The dreamer, the dreamer is celestial in the, in the comics, and I think he even has ties to the X Men, if I'm not mistaken, Michael. But just your um, thoughts on, on, the only on thing I, the only thing I know about Tiamat is he's supposedly the most powerful. Mm of the celestials and he's he's only asleep so he's not gone he's not completely off the map uh but chris yeah did you have any more insight on again that whole how did you take in that moment was it too much for you at getting all that or you were just like okay this is the moment when cersei's getting the explanation getting all the yeah the robots and the emergence and the and the the whole purpose of them yeah i was understanding it for sure and especially uh um you know when he's explaining it and uh I thought because I was I kept wondering to myself like what why is Thena having these episodes like what is causing them, um, so it helped explain like you know like what she's Her seeing and, and, yeah. and just mm -hmm. like yeah like and then and then it explained at the end when Phaesto says you know every time these emergencies happen <clears throat> we're connected that's how we're even able to survive these events so that helps try to explain that it's a lot for you know to give the audience but yeah you know I, I was I, I was personally cool with it yeah. I mean, again, and who knows? This is this is probably just the planting the seeds of a sort. Just like this episode, this scene did. It's going to probably uh, obviously have a lot more implications to the future of the MCU. But again, I was just like, Thanos, why didn't they stop him? 
You think he's asleep? I don't think he's asleep. I think she killed him. Yeah. Oh, she, she, killed she, him? Turned, she turned him to stone. I think he's dead, like, dead. Yeah, I think he's dead, oh, okay. dead. <laughs> I thought dead. I thought they just put him on a little sleeping spell, like yeah. kind of the uh, mantis, what they were trying to do to Thanos. But if he's dead, uh, I guess that that sucks because I wanted to see that celestial. Which, by the <laughs> like, way, let oh, me. Oh no. The scale the, seen as an IMAX. <laughs> Seeing a yeah. celestial on the big screen, we didn't. Yeah. That the Guardians, which I love the Guardians, but they did not do the celestials justice at all. I mean, even seeing Eagle the planet and seeing the head of nowhere, but the celestials yeah. are huge, especially on IMAX. Was it that any was difference, tough. by the way, Mike? Uh, seeing it in 4D and IMAX, was it did it give you even more emergence of a sorts of being emerged in the scene? Uh, no, I, I think the, the biggest thing with 4D and why, why I'm a little disappointed is like as much money as they spent on the seats and the experience with that, I yeah. feel like the screen and other stuff, I was like. Yeah, I thought the picture would be better. Mm. So interesting. Yeah, like even even the the the, the size of it and then the quality. Yeah, it, it wasn't like an IMAX 4D experience. It was just a regular like it was just the seats that were the seats were just doing all that. So that's the only thing I was disappointed. Like that was fun. Yeah, but, I, but honestly, like it was. It's not something I would do all the time because like I'm trying to. I'm like I'm trying to watch the movie. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> Like God damn, was flying everywhere. I couldn't do yeah. it. Man. I couldn't do it myself personally. But it sounds fun, but it doesn't sound like. But it's fun to experience at least one once. Once, once okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. do it for. I'm just, uh, I'm just the loyal to AMC, videos. so they will never see me in there. Yeah. <laughs> I did it but, for Into the Spider Verse. I think. I think that was, ooh, was the, that, all that yeah, web did, slinging. Did they bring you into the Spider Verse. Yeah, honestly, it felt like it. It was great. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I gotta check. I don't even know if I have one out here, but I gotta find one. But let's talk about one of the more complex characters, which we we mentioned Minari, uh, and this is her kind of um, unspoken love interest in the film. But Druid, uh, Barry Kino, this young man, Macari. He, Macari. yeah, Macar. What did I say? Minari. 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 Which Macari. is also a great, it's a great movie. movie. Very, uh, <laughs> Minari, Minari, Minari. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you guys' thoughts on Druid. Uh, I, th I think, honestly, this character, which speaks a lot to this film and kind of the themes that Chloe was going for in the writer, is just the, the, the conflict that this character mm -hmm. has. That I can literally stop people from killing each other, but I'm being told not to. Uh, Michael, your thoughts on this character, uh, the performance, um, the, the the mind control, his little island, his utopia that he had. What, what was your thoughts on this character here, man? Funny enough, like, who, who would have thought that I would come out of this movie, like, really, really loving the character of Drew? Like, a character I really didn't really, I didn't really know that much about uh about the character of Druig. And I'm like, especially with like Richard Matt, Richard Matt is right there. And I'm like, man, I'm simping for I'm simping for Druig a little bit. And yeah, I I love I, I like the character. I loved I loved his relationship with Makari and, yeah. and and the conflict with him. Like, yeah, like and even when he took over that uh town and like uh what was it? In Rome, Mesopotamia. Is, uh, when he took over the all Amazon, of I think. Yeah. Or I'm like, the Amazon is where he ended up with the living there. With his people, yeah. He's talking about before that. He's talking about the when, when, right when, before uh, they separated. When oh, he actually wow. says like, "You got to, when you have to kill yeah, me." You, you have to kill me. Yeah. And he yeah, took yeah. over like everybody. I was like, "Dang!" Like Charles yeah, Xavier. Yeah. Charles Xavier could never unless yeah. he has Cerebro. Hey, maybe maybe but, Druid and uh, Wanda have some relations because she seems to like to take over people's minds and towns. But yeah, <laughs> oh, you know, give give Wanda a break, man. Yeah. No, sorry. Continue. <laughs> but I but I but I love in terms of like the performance. Like yeah. I really I really enjoyed. Like this is my first time ever seeing like Barry Keoghan and anything. So oh, he's great. He's, he's awesome. Great, man. And this ain't the last time you're gonna see him in a superhero movie. He'll be in Batman uh, coming up next year. And I don't know if you guys know the oh, rumors about who he's playing. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I didn't even know he was in it. Yeah, yeah. so he, yeah. he looks like the Flash. Oh, he's, 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 it's he's a rumor. You heard the rumor, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, about to, I'm about to Google it right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, it's just oh, a rumor. Yeah, we yeah, might as well say it. Hey, this guy's Googling this shit right now. That's crazy. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Well, I'm going to let Michael find the surprise of who they're saying is. But at first, they were saying that he might be the Mad Hatter, but he might be playing a much bigger, more important Batman villain. Um, mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Let me know. I want to see Michael's live reaction, ladies and gentlemen, when he sees who he's it. potentially playing. But uh, Chris, while Mike's right looking now. that up, man, what did you think of this character and the, and the dilemma? Again, him and Fastos yeah. to me had the two biggest responsibilities of humanity, creating war, warfare, but also mind control. Uh, what's your thoughts on that character? Yeah, I liked I liked his character. I liked his conflict. I mean, of course, what, I hated him when everyone else hated him when uh, my man, uh, what's my man's name? 
Da, 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 da. When Kingo said, you know, Jurek sucks. Like I felt that moment. I was like, this motherfucker does suck. God damn. <laughs> um, but I, lo- I love the I love the controversy the controversy. And you know, then we find out why Ajax wants him to stop them from you know stopping from stopping the war because that's how humans uh, develop their technology. That's how mm-hmm. they advance in uh, medical mm-hmm. stuff. So it made that made that, that that made more sense at the end. I'm trying to tell you all this motherfucker, you know, two out of ten. But um, it's, a lot, it's a lot of nuance, man. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of stuff, and it's like, yeah, like because people would ask, like, if you, y'all could just fix the whole planet, and they're like, that's not how humans are supposed to develop. It's not how supposed right. to evolve. Yeah. So I, I liked his character. His swag was 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 good. His leather jacket, hmm, questionable, but cool. <laughs> um, and I did love that he had a little connection with uh, Makari, especially towards the end when we see more of it. So I was a, uh, I became a fan of of Druig. I didn't, yeah love him in the beginning i understood his conflict but when you think about it back and then you know rewatch you really kind of like it's like deeper it's a deeper moment that they brought in and that character there's still a lot to play with that character because again just mm-hmm. in, in the film even says it can you imagine what that does to someone all the stuff that he had to uh kind of yeah. look over and um you know and the film wanted you to think he was going to be the traitor of the film right with uh ajax dying but obviously we know who it was but yeah i'm really fascinated to learn more about that character to explore more of that character but uh michael before we go to amanda did you, did you see who this young man might I'm be i'm still looking for it it's not it's not coming oh, so up. it's well, not well, everywhere okay yeah. well i don't Maybe know if we, if we want to say it amanda someone said it in the chat i don't know and again it's a rumor uh, we I talked about leaks here. This isn't even a leak. This is just a it's, rumor. It's your show. Is it for is it for Richard Patterson universe? That's what uh-huh. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he he is in the film. And again, no one knows who I think some people right now he's listening to IMDB as like a young cop. Like a just a Yeah, cop right. That's film. that's what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. He's playing a cop, and I'm like, oh, that's like <laughs> but, but apparently he's playing someone and CG has it right here. Apparently he's gonna be the Joker. Uh and again, that that yeah. who knows? I don't it's more see like it. Robin. I was so, saying, I don't personally see it, but I didn't see Hugh, uh, uh, you know, uh, my man Heath mm-hmm. Ledger as a Joker, uh, you know. So Amanda, you're, you're I take. do have let's, to let's dive into DC. I do bit. have to say something. If you haven't seen Killing of a Sacred Deer by Yorgos Lanthimos, <laughs> yeah, 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 you will see that Barry Keoghan can pull off the Joker if he is going to be the Joker. So that's the one yeah. thing I recommend that movie. That's a great it's recommendation. Dark and twisted. <laughs> if you can't stomach it, I get it, but it is just one of the most obscure it's film a weird that film. I've seen. It's, it's weird, weird, but film. it's that good. That one like Netflix, Amazon, whatever. I'm, I'm going to check for you. Uh, be- yeah. Say it again. I think it Say might it be on Amazon or Netflix. It's Killing of a Sacred, sacred Deer. Yeah. It could be on Netflix, but he's, I don't Colin know if you guys Farrow, watched The Nicole Lobster Kitt, too. It's the yeah. same director and the favorite. Mm-hmm. It's the same mm-hmm. director and writer. <gasps> The favorite. Yeah. It's a very obscure so check film. check that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Him, him and his, he's just spaghetti. He's just, oh, just, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, it's um, whacked. Yeah, it looks it's like good. it's on Netflix. That's I think yeah. it was on Netflix, yeah. yeah it's something it that's it's a very different film. But he's a great actor, like Amanda said. Yeah. I think he was even in uh, – he was in Christopher Nolan's small role, but Dunkirk. Um, yes, true. He was in another, like – So I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch The Harder They Fall first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll check out that other one. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's a yeah, weird film. It. It's a weird – but he's, yeah. a, he's a great young actor. Uh, again, he's blowing up Marvel, DC now, and so much things – so many more things to come. But I think Drew is a very complex character in – and Amanda, just your thoughts on Druid. Yeah. Um, any more thoughts on, on the character and his um, role in the film? Yeah, like you said, I think Druid and Fastos were very important to the human to the human race and yeah. their progression. And I think that's where um, they didn't do it. Like Chloe and the rest of the team, they didn't give that room to breathe. I think they were raising such important questions and there were some great moments with both of them um, and that they were challenged with, uh, many decisions like that. And I think that that's where, you know, if you wanted to make some, like something different, like Eternals, those are the questions that you have to ask because yeah. In all honesty, Chloe Zhao, as much as like I dislike Nomadland, she is one of the directors that has a <laughs> has a very humanistic lens, and for mm-hmm. her to like cement these celestials, these gods into the world, like in Earth, and like have these connections with humans, she's the only one that could have done that. And I think that she did that quite beautifully. As much as I didn't like the execution of certain things, yeah. but Druig's <clears throat> really strong. Again, there's not enough of him. Yep. I loved his connection with Makari. It was just Very like a, great. it was the sweetest thing ever. It's like, I hate everyone except for this like ray of mm-hmm. sunshine of mm-hmm. a speedster. And I just love that. And it's the cutest thing ever. So I love them together. But Druig, again, like you said, I didn't expect to love him as much as I did, but he's like right. top three for me in this movie. 
I agree. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. And yeah. it's so much responsibility on this. So that's what I love about the character. And I can't, again, I can't wait to see what, what comes of it. Uh, but just kind of, again, wrapping up this, this second half and going to the third act. And I definitely want to pinpoint this because the, number one, you talk about a blow up Brian Tyree Henry from Atlanta to Joker to into the spider verse to making his way into the MCU and just careers just continuing to blow up him as fastos, um, you know, a character that it talk about responsibility, being responsible for so many terrors of the world and, and, and the weight that that character held. And you talk about even exploring that character on the Disney plus show and, um, Man, what a, what a great character! And, and and Michael, I want to start off with you, man. Just on your thoughts on the character, the the use, the intellect, the the responsibility they had, the again the controversy that idiots of the world criticize this film about with uh, Marvel's. I guess can we say it's the first official openly gay character in the MCU? Yes. Um, and how they handled that, uh, and just your thoughts on the character as a whole. <laughs> Somebody I know, uh, funny enough, called him uh, Magical Paperboy. <laughs> Paperboy, because <laughs> of, of the thing. But I mean, yeah, yeah I like I like the character of uh, Fastos. I'll say yeah. probably top four mm. in in terms of like uh, all of the other Eternals. And yeah, Brian Tyree Henry is a good actor, and it's good to see him able to do other things. And he always talks about you know wanting to step outside of you know the Paperboy. Yeah. Uh, role and and things that because that's usually what people see him as and what they want to cast him as and all the type of roles that he gets he's like I'm tired of doing like I'm glad I'm so it's good to see him step out of that you know do other other things Mm -hmm. and uh, there was also an interview where he talked about how he was also glad that he wasn't he didn't have to like work out like uh, Kamal Nanjiani and like they wanted him the way he was and so that's a good thing about the Eternal like it showed different type you know not just races and genders and sexual orientations but also body types Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. that kudos you know on Chloe Zhao and uh, Kevin Feige and uh, Nate Moore and everything like that for including that in the movie Um, as far as the queer representation aspect of it I mean I didn't hate it like Mm -hmm. It wasn't like the best thing ever before a Marvel movie. It was, it was pretty. It was pretty major, and uh, yeah. part and it's part of the reason why I always say like representation matters, and why I even put myself out there on the internet despite being called the N word, the F word, told to kill myself. Black people can't be gay and go repent and all this <laughs> other stuff because for the most part, yeah. like culture is what influences a lot of things. Even science, like sci-fi, like you got people that were influenced by Star Wars, then they go on to be scientists, and then they got make inventions based on that. Like culture pushes the, the community forward. And part of the reason why gay marriage is more acceptable in society is partly because of things like Glee, Will and Grace, and all these other, Ellen coming out of the Ellen. closet, Buffy, yeah, Buffy the yeah. Vampire Slayer, or Willow, Xena, and everything like that. So like, it needs to, you know, it needs to be more. And that's why, like I said, that's the reason I put myself out there because a lot of reviewers and a lot of things that we do things like that, uh, uh, do think, do the things that we do, like it's mostly populated by straight white men. But then when you do see like other black reviewers, most of them are straight. Most of y'all are straight. And so there's certain like nuances and things that maybe people don't see or that I would like to see talked about. And I'm like, Put it out there. I, nobody wants to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Representation matters. So I had no problem. I, I enjoyed the character of Fasto, seeing that character show up in a Disney movie. You know, black gay, black gay men. I, hey, I'm here. I would like to be seen as a superhero. Yep. So Because I saw other people, you know, and, 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 and I, I, stop me if I go too much on it. Hey, on, let on, it out, my friend. Let I it will, out. Because I will tend to go on it. But like. <laughs> Who? So it's like as a content creator, like I get it from both sides. Like, it, it, and it's exhausting a lot of times being a black gay comic geek in this space, to, you know, reviewing movies and things like that because you got to deal with white people, and a lot of times they, you know, they're racist, and then you also got to deal with the homophobia and racism from white people. But then when you get yeah. to other people of color, Asian, Native Americans, yada yada yada, they could be just as racist as white people, and then you also still got to deal with homophobia on that. But then when you get to your own people. Maybe not racism, obviously, but then you still got to yeah. deal with homophobia from your own people. So, like, I even hear black people on on, on Twitter and and going back and forth. I went back and forth with this one woman on Twitter, like, "Oh, why does the black character have to be gay? Why couldn't it be one of the white characters?" Like, we fought, we don't we don't have that many black character or black black uh, superheroes in the MCU, and we finally get another one. And this one has to be gay. Oh, my Marvel doesn't care about black people. And I'm like, we have Falcon, War Machine. 
Monica Rambeau, like Black Panther, like I can go down the list. We get one, and I guess you could technically say two with Valkyrie, but that was hinted at. Also, so, it doesn't matter yeah. because she's treating it as if it's a disability, like as if yeah, as course. if as if there's something wrong with it. So like you're, yeah. you're even answering her is nonsense because it's like, what do you mean? Why does he have to be black? Like, maybe it's like, why does a black guy have to like have one leg or get killed first? Like those are things that you can argue about, not about him being gay. Like that doesn't like that doesn't diminish his powers. But that's a lot. But that's a lot of people's sentiment. Like uh, the comedian Godfrey said the same thing on Vlad TV. Like, oh, why did, why did, why did the, why did the black character have to be gay? We don't have that many black super. Like he's still black. He's just mm. gay. Like blacks, gay people yeah. exist. Black deaf people exist. Black disabled yeah. people. Black lesbian. People, black trans people exist. We deserve to be seen as superhero representation. And plus, it's all fictional. Like. <laughs> And so yeah, like yeah. so yeah. I, I appreciated the fact that it was in there, like, and so and then you know they had the kiss and which I was surprised about, and I'm actually glad that they didn't censor it, like because that's why it's being banned in certain countries, because mm -hmm. uh, like the Middle Eastern countries, Africa, Nigeria, people hit me yeah. up on my TikTok saying, Oh yeah, I live in Nigeria and I can't see the Eternals because it's banned here. And so, like, yeah, black left-handed people is I'm left-handed, so yeah, like. <laughs> Uh, James, but yeah, like Heroes. so, I, I appreciate that Mar that Disney and Marvel are sticking to their guns and not censoring yeah. it, yep, and everything <clears throat> like that. But I personally wish Disney. I, I'm pretty sure when they went into this, Disney knew they were going to face this backlash and yeah. that they were going to have yeah. co certain countries push back and want them to take it out of the movie. Yeah. So I'm like, so because because of that and because they knew this is going to happen, I'm like, I wish they would have went a little bit further with it in terms of like Fatos, Fastos and his husband. Cause I'm yeah. like, y'all yeah. y'all y'all have been married for years. Y'all have yeah. a kid together. Yeah. You're about to go off to war. A war that A, you're the love of your life, you might and not see him see again. Him. And yeah. then if yep. Fastos loses this war, the entire planet is destroyed. Right. You should have tongued yeah. him the fuck down. <laughs> like not on a pack on the kid like yeah. Uh, 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 like <laughs> Cersei, Cersei and Icarus got a sex scene. Like give him a blowjob behind the back. Like talk about Eternals, like a, an eternal, an eternal blowjob. Like yeah, it obviously is good. Oh, you don't gotta see it, but you can still see him like <laughs> implied. Like, come on, like I love it. This is this is war, like, and this desperation, like, your, the love of your life is about to go away, like, and plus, again, and I only say that mostly just to get the people, you know, straight ejected, the people pissed off about it, yeah, yeah. like, because I'm like, people are already just pissed off about the generic peck on the list, even though uh, one, one of the uh, a famous black YouTuber who I'm not going to say his name, he talked about, oh, I can't believe Marvel has gone woke in that moment. They put that in the movie, and I had to turn my eyes. I was disgusted. He wasn't talking about be turning his eyes on the sex scene. He Drop talked the about name, the, bro. Drop the, the name. Bland, uh, Tyrone Magnus. But yep. well, yeah, the most blandest of blandest oh, sex really? or, or kiss on the uh, on the screen. And it's, oh, I had to turn my eyes. Marvel is going woke. Why they had to shut the fuck up? But yeah, so I'm like, because of people like that. Yeah. Give them a fucking blowjob because uh, the people are gonna the people are upset anyway. Make them more upset. Yeah, and the, more right. the straight yeah. agenda is like what quenches my thirst and keeps me going. So like, yeah, like give it to me. Give it to give. Oh, uh, give it to me. Like. <laughs> hey, I love it. I love it, Michael. That's why I have you here, man. And again, um, <laughs> it's it, again. I, I thought Brian Tyree Henry in, in, in that that moment was. Uh, I, I personally didn't feel like it was a force. It was a you know, the nonsense agenda. Nah, but um, Chris, man, tossing to you. Just your your thoughts on the character, um, the the character moment that we see of him. You know, being a response for atomic blonde, atomic blonde, atomic bomb. And I was I was hoping <laughs> I was hoping because they even brought up vibranium and maybe who knows the future holds. I was hoping that yeah, they, they get a Wakanda connection. Yeah. He was with, connected Something. to Wakanda and vibranium yeah. and all that. And again, who knows with with Black Panther two is. Uh, Whatever, whenever we see that film with the, with the, all the stuff going on there, yeah. but just your thoughts on on the character and uh, what it brought to the table. Yeah, honestly, that was a great rant. But he was he was my second least favorite of the whole movie. But obviously not because he's gay. I don't care about that. Um, to me, I love the nerds of movies. I love the Donatellos. I love the the Blue Rangers. I love Shuri. <laughs> I didn't believe his nerdiness. Like it, something about it didn't. He didn't. It didn't go all the way with me, and uh, I just couldn't. I was like, "Damn! Like it's just not there. Like what I needed to be." Um, a couple weird acted lines, you know. Like I guess at some time in the end, some, I think one of them asked, "Like, like, like what's wrong?" He's like, "I don't know." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, that didn't sound realistic at all." 
Um, it was cool to see how they're like, I love to see like these Eternals, like, you know, acclimating into real life. So it's like mm-hmm. Cersei is a teacher and she has like a human boyfriend, well, Humanity, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever he is. <laughs> and, and seeing, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and face though, face though, seeing him like at his crib, mm-hmm. like fixing his bike, fixing this kid's bike, like manually, like that, that stuff is cool. Just as an overall character though, like I didn't really like love his powers. And just like, like I said, like the nerdiness, like it's just like, mm-hmm. damn, like, like Shuri like nails it and like nails it again in Endgame. I'm like, damn, like this, this is it. This is this is what I looked for, but I just didn't get that from him. It's no, it's, he's not whack. Like mm-hmm. I thought Sprite was whack, and she's and she's my least favorite. He's not whack. He's just like my second least favorite. Just like I just didn't get, I just didn't get into it. For sure. And again, that that goes into unfortunately with ten characters, not everyone you know is going to resonate with everyone, right? And we didn't get as much time with with the Fastos, who was mostly just like we'll talk about uh, the speedster. But you know, unfortunately, some people did get the short end of the stick, and we could have elaborated more on those characters. But Amanda, I thoughts still on, know on he was Fastos? Going to slavery. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, Disney Plus. That yeah, because they showed him crying over a fucking yeah, World War Two. Yeah, Clearly, he was intervening, so he he yeah. helped with the atomic bomb. Hey, he was, I guess, oh, helping Wak- 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 Lane, Wakanda like, become the the greatest, you know, country. <laughs> uh, I guess that's what he was doing. But uh, Amanda, your thoughts on this character and and, and uh, the impact on the group and power skills and all that stuff. And and, and 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 similar to Chris, do you feel like he didn't have the the gravitas that he brought to the role per se, baby? Yeah, well, I agree 100% with Michael and everything you said. Um, but I, I really, I really loved Fastos. He was was like top four for me. Um, I do like his power sets. Again, I think it goes to the writing where they didn't write his character the best in regards to what he can do with his powers. They didn't fully go into it, and like that's how Druig suffered as well. All these characters have wicked backstories that we could have gone into and dived into and then it just it didn't happen like it fell short it's like they did this and then it's like okay but why did they do this what makes them question any of the things that they're doing like these decisions and all of that like we didn't dive into that and i think that's where these characters fall short but also brian tyree henry has this awesome charisma that I love, love, love watching him. And I just want to give him a hug because he's awesome. Uh, he's just so great. And uh, I love the family unit, all of that. I just think he didn't get enough screen time. I did buy him as like the tech whiz. I did. I think that he was also funny at times, which was great too. He was really quippy and and I love that. Sarcastic, yeah. Yeah. And that worked for him. I think he delivered yeah. it quite well, especially when he was like, beating Icarus. I'm like, yeah, you get him. Like just Always keep him keep him on lock. That was hard. Keep him on lock. I was like, yeah, you definitely can do this. I'm like, I was just so happy for him. Yeah. Um but yeah, I really enjoyed Fastos. I just want to see more of him. It's not enough. Mm-hmm. And I think the writing really showed that for these characters, unfortunately. I totally agree with you. And I think the biggest scene for me from Faso is when he had that moment with his leader, uh, with the atomic bomb and we cut to obviously the future, but I mm-hmm. wish we could have really felt that more because literally like he's that was one of the biggest obviously uh things yeah. in history as far as just like terrible things in, in humanity so i wish we would have maybe had a little bit more time on that and from that moment to meeting his husband like what was it that, at that moment to make you get back and believe in him, humanity and whatnot so it, yeah. of course all these characters could have gotten their own movie uh and, you know, or their yeah. own show but it, it does it's tough yeah. to get 10 it's people tough. in exactly. one movie exactly yep. which does, and, yeah, and we all will these be. people are, a lot of these guys are big names like this exactly stuff. Exactly. And we will get to that question that Michael brought up. Would it have played better as a TV show versus a film? But just kind of wrapping up the third half of the film, um, you know, we get the big third act of the movie. We already talked about the, you know, Cersei and her goal. We get three main battles, Cersei versus the the Celestial and Sprite getting in the mix, uh, Icarus versus the Eternals. And then we get Thena uh, fighting the, um, the main Deviant, which we really haven't talked about the Deviants, which I guess we can kind of transition into that as well as this third act of the film, uh, starting with you, Michael. Deviants, did they, from a design standpoint, did they work from a character standpoint? Some people mentioned the scrolls and how they were used and just essentially a pawn of, of the chessboard. But your thoughts on the Deviants, but also just your thoughts on that third act. And, and was it like a traditional Marvel third act with s- special effects and really no stakes? Or how did you feel about that? Uh, this is this is another issue that I have with, with regards to the movie. The third, like the third act, to talk about uh, the movie not being un- unlike any other Marvel film. This is when it became a, just like every other Marvel film with the giant mm-hmm. CG third act and everything like that. But then also, my, my biggest issue with the movie is what they did with the villain, villains. Like more specifically, uh, 
uh, what's what the fuck is the deviant's name? Krogu, whatever. Krogu, I'm yeah. Krogu. That. No, yeah, Krogu. Krogu. I'm it's thinking Krogu. Krogu. Yeah. That's, that's uh, Baby Yoda. But <laughs> Krogu. But like, not even because I have a connection. Oh, that's not Krogu from the. I don't know shit yeah. about Krogu from the comics. But <laughs> just what they just what they introduce, like this whole thing about uh, a deviant gaining the powers of the Eternals and becoming sentient. I don't something know where that, that came from. Has yeah. never happened before, and it seemed yeah. like he was going to become a bigger threat. And then all of a sudden, like they went nowhere. With that whole character, even even kind of the tease of uh, like they kind of made it seem like based on the trailers that him and Thena were gonna have a thing or yeah, or secret lover, or secret yeah. lovers. But like <laughs> it went again, it went no like, boom, he's dead, and it was just like so. Then what was the point of having this deviant be some be such a big threat? Yeah, and become sentient only for it to not really play into anything. Like he died, convenient he became the most sentient. Like. It was stupid. I didn't like it. It took it took away from the movie for me. And then also, I ca- I kind of also don't like uh, that they made Icarus the villain, but that's a whole other topic. But yeah, like the whole the whole second act was. Just, I mean, third act was basically you know a Marvel fight, like a big big CGI fight, and then like even how it ended with the, with the whole we have to the Unimind and how they took out how she took out the Celestial yeah. and how oh I got the power because the Celestial merged with us too, and that's a like I thought it was stupid. Like yeah. I thought it was stupid. And then I'm also like, even when, when Fastos was fighting, uh, I was like, how does his powers work? Like his power is technology. Yeah. Where is all these, where are all these gadgets and stuff coming from? <laughs> like, I'm confused. Like, how does this I, work? I, I'm, I'm t- I, I hear your, um, definitely hear your uh, criticism with the third. I will say as far as, I, I think for me, the deviants, and I really didn't care for them. At the same time, I, I could see the purpose of them. They're almost the, the pseudo versions of the Eternals. Uh, and, and they're just, again, just yeah. used to be a part of this uh, whole scheme that the <laughs> Celestials have. And essentially, the Eternals can just see them as deviants because it's the whole DC conversation. Who watches the Watchmen? Who's going to be the ones that's going to have to take on the Eternals if it comes to that? So I think they could have did a better job at that, if not just maybe even completely remove them uh, from the film. But I can see the mm-hmm. point of the deviants, uh, even though they didn't really stick the landing for me entirely. But Amanda, your, your thoughts on not only how the third act finishes up, again, the three different battles, uh, but just your thoughts on how you took in the Deviants and if there were something that was a little bit a little bit left for desire. I mean, they looked cool. I think the creature designs uh, in the first half of this film were way better than the second half of this film. I feel like it, it happens with all comic book movies. I feel like the special effects just slowly fade and get worse as the movie <laughs> progresses for some reason. So that's what kind of like the third act felt like for me that it was like really choppy. It was all over the place. Again, I love Thena's, uh, Thena's fight. I thought that was really cool in the cave because like her powers, like they light up with the sword mm-hmm. and the shield. I thought that was really cool. Um, but everything else is like, it was messy and it kind of looked... Like it kind of looked bad at the same time. <clears throat> Not that I want to say it, but yeah, like I, I don't know. It felt like every other MCU third act. Like that's where it got messy. And uh it after that point, it took a while to end the movie as well. And I was like, I understand why it's taking so long to just like like cut and dry. You have too many characters here to end this movie. Yeah. Um but yeah, it was it was okay. I didn't yeah. I didn't the deviants and then adding another like adding crow and then at like with Icarus, like it was just way too much. It was like overload and they were trying to like deceive the audience, like who's the villain gonna be? And like that's what it ended up happening. And it just yeah. it did not work for me. I'd rather have one solid threat. And then even that, like they weren't threatening. I don't know. Like there were no stakes in this movie. Like you kind of knew what was going to happen at the same time. And like, obviously they're going to overcome it. Like it's just, I don't know. It, it felt really blend of the third act, like final battle. Mm. So another great valid point. And, and I mean, Chris, and I guess too, just to pose the question, you could, do you feel like, did, did the film have a villain? I guess we can really say, because again, Icarus, if we want to, he's really, he's just following orders. We, we've seen this in a lot of comic book movies and movies in general, just a person, the soldier that's just getting the job done. And he believes in the mission um, as well as the, the Celestials. They're taking away life to give life. So I don't know yeah. if there's quote unquote, like a traditional villain of a sense in this film, which may speak to the positive or negative of the film. No traditional villain. Of course, the beginning we were we're told to believe that the deviants are, yeah. which is fine. So you're seeing them fight that. That's cool. You see Icarus switch sides. Of course, he's taking orders, but he also did threaten to kill his only friends in the whole history of of, of the whole universe. Yeah. So there's that. So you, yes, you are a villain. Uh, let's see, deviants. 
I actually like Deviant's design and then the final form dude, the avatar thing. I thought that dude was cool. It was like Deviant Ultron. Um, but I liked when he said, you know, like, you've been killing my kind for for so long. I'm just here. I'm just protecting mine and I'll, I'll kill you for, for doing kind, this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I respected that. I think someone said on the internet, like, they thought that they were going to team up with the uh, Eternals uh, at the end, but it's, it's cool that they didn't. Yeah. But yeah, I totally agree with Michael's point about like the whole like connection and how it was a little weird at the end. I was just like, ah, I was willing. That was like the movie was just like halfway there, like it was just there, and I was just like, I oh, just just you can wrap it up however you feel. But I, I feel the same way that, that Mike felt. Um, I was like, ah, I don't really get it, but let's just go with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I totally agree, and I mean to to kind of wrap up the film as a minute. There are there were multiple points where I feel like the, it's not in it yet. It's not in it yet, but we end with Sprite getting her powers taken away from her uh, because Ugh. again we know how how <laughs> Michael's uh, or say uh, uh, Chris's favorite character there, uh, but she gets her powers taken away and is going to live life now with Kingo, which I do like that wrap up because again they had the conversation on the plane. Why did you leave me? Well, now he's going to be taking care of her and she's going to be going to school and all that. Uh, and, and maybe learn how to make movies with the best uh, documenter on the planet with uh, the uh, the ballet character. Uh, but we wrap yeah. things up with, uh, who was it? Druid. We have uh, uh, Makari and we have uh, Athena going off to look for other Eternals, Eternals. To, for them to make their own choices. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we end with Dane, who finally took the advice of uh, Cersei to meet his uncle they have a conversation. We see the judge gives them the ultimate ultimatum. I'm going to check your memories to see if this earth is worth saving. And we'll we'll leave the post credit scenes here for a second. But just wrapping it up there, Michael, what did you think of how we wrapped up the finale with all the different ways of our eternal splitting up at the end of the day? Uh, I thought the ending was kind of jar. Like, it felt like something was missing. Like, funny enough, yeah. when, I, when, when I saw it, uh, uh, on the 18th uh, with my co-host uh, Ron we were like wait this, is this the real we feel like Marvel didn't show us the real ending maybe they were teasing it or because we didn't we also didn't they didn't show us the post credit oh, the post credit for the first one yeah, yeah. So we were like right. oh mm -hmm. maybe it's not the real ending is there something else because <laughs> I'm like cause, joke. Cause, yeah because it just like ended yeah. like, I'm going to judge this planet or whatever the, yeah. and it was like the end and I was like but wait is there more like and there was, there was, I mean, technically it was a post credit scene, but like in terms of the movie in itself, yeah, I just thought, then, yeah. I thought the end, like it ended like, okay, we got to wrap this up. All right, let's end it. Like it didn't feel complete. Yeah. It didn't feel complete. Yeah. Like it just felt like the end. And I was like, all right, they could have did a little bit better. I agree with, with that. No, I'm also kind of disappointed that Icarus, uh, granted, we don't know if he's dead. Oh, yeah, he's if you don't see a body, close to the sun. Yeah, if you don't see a body, it doesn't mean just... it. But also, I'm like, they forgave Sprite and she done stab girl, old girl. No, uh, she did you know, pretty quickly. <laughs> like, the Icarus, have to, the Icarus have to kill himself? Like, why do you have to? And again, yeah. Kingo, maybe the smartest of it all, he was gone. He was MIA that whole third act because he was shooting his uh, his sequel of films. But Amanda... Know, with with, with yeah. the reveal that they're basically glorified robots. They'll maybe be back. Fa maybe Fastos yeah. could rebuild. <laughs> he can, actually. Probably <laughs> will. I'm going to say he probably will. Yeah. Uh, but Amanda, your thoughts on this finale? Again, we get one set of Eternals, which I guess... Uh, the ones on the on the on the plane or the ship, sure. they weren't judged by the judge, right? Because they're still on the mission. That's how we got I the post credit scene with Star Fox. Yeah. So I don't know why they weren't pulled to be because they obviously went against the judge as well. But neither here nor there. They Your thoughts find, on the can't finale? <laughs> you can't find them, right? The GPS There's is broken. There's a shield. There's something. Who knows? Yeah, I guess we'll <laughs> find out. But your thoughts before we get to the post credit scene on how things actually did conclude with the the judgment of our uh, Eternals? That's where I got disappointed. Yeah. I said, I watched all of this for them to split up and then come uh, together. <laughs> and then they're splitting up again. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. But like Michael said, it was so jarring. I'm like, yeah, you just yeah. like mash this together. I personally think they should have just ended it with like Sprite going with Kingo and then do like a post credit scene of them like on the ship with obviously with, yeah. what we're going to talk about and then yeah. you can do that like an end credit. Like it still would have worked out to be perfectly honest. You didn't need them judgment day and blah 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 it's like okay i understand that you have to set up a sequel but to be perfectly honest i don't think a sequel with all of them will work at this point that's like a totally different conversation but like that's just the vibe that i got in that ending i don't think mm -hmm. it was a strong ending whatsoever for me to be like 
I'm excited for a sequel to this. It's like I'd rather just see individuals pop up at this point in the future because they don't. Interesting. There's too many. Can't it's do a it. Lot. And apparently there was supposed to be more of them. Uh, 12 Eternal. Yeah, 12. So yeah. It would have been even more crazier. But uh, your thoughts, Chris, on this finale before we kind of dive into these uh, these two post credit stingers. Yeah, I totally agree with all of you guys. It was a little jarring, was a little confusing. I did, and and I'm usually I'm usually cool with you. Kind of expect with these, you know, compilation movies where it's like someone's gonna go here, you're gonna go here. Oh, she's eleven. You know, they're gonna, right. you know, they gotta go right. their separate ways. But I just, I just, I wasn't clear on exactly where everyone went. So I was like, yeah. damn, I don't know where everyone is. But I was like, yeah. all right, we're here. It's over. We'll, we'll see what the end credit scene I explained. But I, I agree with you guys. And the end credits, I I don't think they disappointed. Uh, for I know for some people for this first one, which you know just kind of setting the scene again, we have some of our Eternals on the ship searching for other Eternals, yeah. and we get Pip the troll. Which I'm not gonna lie, CGI of Pip wasn't that great. Which I guess nope. there's something came nope. out about. I think nope. that nope. there was nope. another scene that they wanted to shoot, and they kind of had to rush it. Which at this point, how are you rushing Marvel films? Neither here nor there. Nope. We get Pip. He introduced Star Fox, which we learned to be in the scene is the brother of Thanos. He has the same little crystal ball that Ajax was able to communicate to Celestial. So how did he get that? Uh, but Harry Styles, he's uh, he's he's the heartthrob. He's the people that people respect. Uh, I've heard nothing. But I, don't, I don't know the person, but I've heard that he's a pretty great person from everything I've, I've read on him and from other actors that have worked with him and obviously him being an artist. But he's going to be a character in the MCU moving forward. So Amanda, when you saw Harry Styles come out as this new character, Star Fox, the brother of Thanos, helping yeah. the Eternals look for their friends, your thoughts on that first post credit scene? So first of all, when that was spoiled by said person, yeah. I thought it was a fake tweet. I'm like, this is funny. Cause like, it's a post credit scene. Like how are we supposed to know? So I went to bed that night thinking it was a joke and then it exploded the day after. And I was like, Oh my God, this is real. So first that was spoiled, which sucks. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how to feel about it. I kind of like face palmed when I saw him. Not that I dislike Harry Styles. Like I was a One Direction fan. Like I, I get that. Um, and he's great. I think he's a very talented person, but like, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I hope he proves me wrong, but I face palmed. I'm like, for the love of God, he's acting like himself. And like, that's just going to bother me the most because I didn't see a character. And like, that's the issue here. Like I just saw Harry Styles in a suit. And like acting like all quippy with the banter and all that. I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. Like I hope a character develops, but I was just like, oh my God, why did this happen? So that's where I'm at. <laughs> and I guess would you have, and we'll get to the second one, but would you have preferred to have had that character be uncasted versus a character that we hear his voice and not actually see them, which we'll talk about uh, here yeah. in a second. But uh, yeah. Chris, man, your <laughs> thoughts on this new character, uh, you know, being introduced as the brother of Thanos and related to Athena and, and helping them on the quest to find their friends. Yeah, don't flirt with your cousin then. I didn't know they were fucking cousins. That's yeah, crazy. I didn't know either. <laughs> um, Keep it in the family. I, I don't know who Harry Styles is. I, do, I would know that he's famous if I saw him in the street. So I knew that he was someone. I don't, I don't know anything about this fellow. Um, but I didn't know the character either, so it was. I went Thursday night, you know, opening night, IMAX, Lincoln, like everyone's a packed wall, so like everyone's just talking about it. So like, people are explaining it in, in between before the next um, um, scene to each other. But um, we'll see how it goes. Like, like I said, I don't know what he's like, but you know, the, what I what I understand about the character it seems very very interesting um, of of an actual Marvel person to include. So then it's just mm -hmm. on Harry to just do the job well. So do the we'll job, see. yeah. And, and again, Marvel doesn't normally strike out with these castings. There's something that Harry had to bring to the role because Tolson's you, Michael, who I'm pretty sure can elaborate more on this character being, you know, seeming like a good guy, have some villainous ways. And you, you cast someone that's, I guess, as likable as Harry Styles. It, it, he can play that role of like someone you want to root for, but has villainous ways. But your thoughts on the introduction of this character, Pip the Troll as well, and what it can mean for the future of the MCU. Um, I, I thankfully I wasn't spoiled by the the lead. I knew it was there, but mm -hmm. I didn't actually see what it was. So thank thankfully I was able to avoid that. Unlike the Spider Man thing this morning, which I still don't really know if it's real or not. Yeah. But uh, the the Harry Styles thing it, it kind of threw me off because I was like, because I didn't know. I was like, is that Harry Styles? <laughs> so like. I, I wasn't so much paying attention that much to the performance or anything like that because I was still just like, 
Because <laughs> I was I was trying to pinpoint. I was like, who? Because I'm like, yeah. who is that? Like, why does he look so familiar? Then I finally figured it out. I was like, that was Harry Styles. So that's what I was doing the whole time I saw. I was like, who is? Like, I was just looking. And I was like, well, yeah, I was trying. I was trying to look, but like based on the, the little bit that I was paying attention, I mean, I didn't really. It, it was it wasn't enough of the character to really gauge like if he would yeah. be good in the role or not like it was it was like really like only like 30 seconds more more or less yeah. my biggest confusion i was just mostly like why are we introducing the brother of thanos when there's no thanos like that that whole dynamic and and rivalry between the two of them we're not going to get to see and so it's just like yeah like what's the what's True. the point but in terms of like star fox himself i mean in, in some ways it's kind of, it kind of I, I guess it makes sense that you get a a, a, a high profile pop culture celebrity mm-hmm. celebrity because Star Fox is basically a man whore. Mm-hmm. Like his powers, his power sense is to be able to increase the pleasure centers of a person's brain. Like mm-hmm. so, anybody that's around him feels a sense of euphoria mm-hmm. or anything like that. Whether you want, like his powers are always on. So no matter what, you're mm-hmm. always euphoric or or whatever when you're around him, and then he could turn it up you know, a little bit in terms of like the sexual aspects mm. or whatever. So he's constantly like, he uses that for his own, his own personal game, but ultimately he's not a villain. He's like, he's still a good person. Yeah. But he's just yeah. a person that's very hedonistic and mm. living, living for the moment and wanted to, you know, have a good, t- basically he's party Thor more or less from, from, from what if. <laughs> well, I, uh, yeah. again, no, Marvel, That's yeah, he's, he's killing it tonight, but again, Marvel, they don't normally strike out with these casts. I, I believe there had to be something with Harry. Uh, yeah. and, and I think there was rumors even months ago that MCU was talking to Harry Styles and apparently this is the role that they cast him for. And we'll see what the rest of the future holds for that character. But I think the second one, um, kind of call a lot of people by surprise after the fact i was under the assumption just to kind of break down a scene we see dane he takes his advice from his girlfriend to visit his uncle we see him go to his his house we he opens up the case we see it's the ebony blade which you know has some it can can go one or two ways you can go down a dark path or come out the other way and and we'll learn who his uncle is going to be which i thought hearing that voice do you really want to you know whatever the line was you really want to pick that up dane or whatever i was assuming it was his uncle but lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and Chloe Zhao came in. I, that seems such a weird way to introduce a character that way, to learn about yeah, her on I Instagram agree. or Twitter or yeah. something, or interview. It was revealed to be Blade, Mahershala Ali, uh, and that's our first official introduction to Blade in the MCU. Amanda, it's a little bit underwhelming. It's cool. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. I mean, this is the MCU dive into the supernatural. We have this, you know, Excalibur type of sword and and vampires yeah. and werewolves. They just announced the casting of uh, Werewolf by Night. So we're getting to the supernatural stuff of the MCU, which gets me excited. But I think that's the most underwhelming like appearance of an MCU character of all like, time. Like it's an Academy Award winning actor. It's a voice. It's and you're just using it. Yeah. And like I know that he's a very distinct voice, and like I yes. love him for that. But it's just yes. the fact that like. When I couldn't even pick it up, it's like, are you like really? This is how you're going to introduce him into the MCU? I was like, what are you doing? Like that really upset me because I personally yeah. thought it was Jeffrey Wright for a second because I was still like having that, what if, if in my mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. But I'm like, I don't know how that would work. Like, why would he go to why like would he come? Yeah, to Dane. Like that doesn't make re- sense. And then like obviously the theories with him, but it's just like. Come on, man! It's an like, Academy Award winner. It's Blade. It's Mahershala freaking Ali. Like ah, that's so, how you're gonna yeah. introduce it. Like that's lame, ah, man. I wanted an entrance like so Jonathan lame. Majors, like at the end of Loki. Yeah. Like this is what you do. Like ugh. missed opportunity. I missed know. opportunity. I, the only thing, and um, the only thing I can say is Blade works in the shadows. So I guess it fits the character yeah. that we don't see him, and he's just coming yeah. from the shadows. But Chris, your thoughts yeah. on Mahershala Ali appearance as Blade? off screen well first things first i'm gonna give myself a thousand percent props because i don't be knowing anything most of the time but i <laughs> said immediately that's blade that's mahershaw ali and people were in the theater like wait who, what and i'm like no 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 that is blade i know mahershaw ali i watch green book every <laughs> night <laughs> but um i i think you guys are right like the movie doesn't even have a a release date so it's like it's kind of crazy to just drop it we don't even know when we're gonna see him Mm -hmm. but it would be crazy 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 fire if at least you saw like even a silhouette even him facing the other way like it would have been way way crazier like just they could have made it so crazy 
maybe they tried to and they really couldn't get him and they just said we'll take the voice take the maybe voice. but yeah. you're right it would have been it would have been crazy it would have been insane man and again I, the rumor has it again rumors that we're going to probably get his first appearance in moon knight with uh oscar isaac and it may and they're saying apparently ethan hawk might be playing dracula and again ebony blade and vampires and this eternal you know all this stuff so we'll see michael Mahersha Ali, first appearance in MCU off screen cameo. What'd you think? Yeah, it was trash. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like for, for especially for some, some something as major as like Blade, like vampires in the MCU and Mahersha Ali. And yet all we get is like a voice, like not even like like uh Chris said, not not a silhouette. You see him from behind, like yeah. just a quick voice. You sure you want to do that? Cut to black. Like what? What? What was that? Like, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't like that. And then to find out that it was to have, and the fact that you got to tell your audience that, oh, that was Mahershala Ali in like an interview. Yeah. An interview. Like it just tells yeah. you how underwhelming, underwhelming that is. Like, I wasn't. I wasn't a fan of that. And it also kind of makes me wonder. I'm like, what? What connection does Blade have with Dane Whitman? Like, why is, why is he? Why is he there? Like. I don't yeah. think I think uh, I mean it's funny it, he's going there for Ebony Blade and they brought Blade in the scene. Uh, I don't know if that yeah. was uh, intentional. And then I'm so, like, yeah. I wonder if they're gonna like, because the Ebony Blade was made by No No the symbiote god, and you kind of mm. saw like almost a symbiote esque like black. The, the, dude the, the, it was following yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. when he tried when yeah. he tried to touch it. So I'm like, yeah. so are we gonna get symbiotes in the MCU? Are we gonna get Null in the MCU? Like. Well, the Venom. What the yeah? Well, Venom post credit yeah, scene. Venom post credit yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the only good thing about that. Yeah. What, 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 what's going on? What's going on? Like, yeah, I would like. We'll but, but also going to Amanda's point, like, yeah, for Eternals two, uh, Grant, I would like to see an Eternals two in the sense of I want to see these characters again. But yeah, all of yeah. them in one movie, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it might be too much, especially now that you got yeah. Eros and Pip the Troll, and uh, they're looking for other Eternal. I think it might be a little. Uh, a little yeah, too I think it might be much. a little too much. Yeah, no, I, I so, agree. Yeah, individually, them popping up in like other stories, but I still want their story to be told. But like, right? right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just like a, a Athena and and uh, or a Makari and uh, Druig movie. They get their own movie, and then nice. like outside, like because Cersei joined the Avengers. She was a prominent member of the Avengers at one point. Mm -hmm. So nice. like, yeah, have her show up in the event. That's what most of the Eternals lore could like, because so the Eternals, even though they're Jack Kirby introduced them in like the 70s, mm -hmm. they weren't really used that much. Like the most you've seen of the Eternals, is both Icarus, who's not a villain, which so I'm like, I hated that they did that. And then Cersei, that's the most you've seen of the Eternals in, in the comics, just those two. Yeah. And now because of the popularity of the movie, they're starting to do more with them. But yeah. Right. Mm. We'll see, man. And I guess just kind of wrapping up before we kind of get where this film's rings for you guys and where you guys feel about uh, the MCU is phase four. But Amanda, just final thoughts in this film. Um, again, going to, tying it back to that 47% Rotten Tomato. Is it the worst MCU film? Does it justify that score? And just again, uh, just final thoughts of the movie. It's not the worst one. Like, it's still enjoyable for me. I personally did not like the structure. Um, some things weren't executed uh, in a way that I, I would have, you know, made those choices. It left me underwhelmed and kind of like disappointed, but I still found like characters like Thena and Gilgamesh and Fastos and Druig. Like, I want to see them again. And, and that's, that's fine. Like I connected with certain characters. You're not going to connect with all of them, as we said. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not the worst one. People are crazy. Uh, I don't have it like high up on my MCU. Which brings me to my point. The <laughs> rankings. I saw your uh, letterbox the other day. Yeah. So if you want to share with the fine folks, Amanda, where does, out of 26 films, God. where does this film rank for you? I saw, this is going to be fun. Uh, um, I had it at 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. The first time I watched it. And then I watched it again. And the second That's time cold. this, the second half of this movie really dragged on. And like, there's a key flashback where I'm like, Oh, this is why I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. And then I, I dropped it to like, I think it's like 22nd or like 20 yes. it's there. Yeah. I know, but it's a movie that like, for me, it's a cool movie that I watched. Mm -hmm. I will not revisit it because I watched it twice already. I got yeah. it. Like got that's just, got that's just yeah. me. That's just me. And but I would Perfect. love to see these characters again yeah. individually. Everyone, <laughs> but for me, it's like it's lower tier of for purposes. Hey. 
I love it. And who knows? We they might do the Hulk with the Eternals and only see them in other movies and never see another. Yeah. Which I, we're gonna see another Eternals film, I think. Uh, yeah. Well, who knows? I mean, again, we got four Thor films. We got three. They, we might Didn't not Feige say trilogy. like it doesn't need a sequel. Like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people. They're they're yeah. not gonna do trilogy things again. They're gonna this no, is maybe not. Face. Like they might they might pull an Inhumans where it's like oh they throw it out then it's like you never hear from them again. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, hey, tossing it to you, Michael. Just overall thoughts of the film. Where it ranks for you out of all twenty six films, and just any any other uh, final things before we get to phase the phase four conversation to wrap up things. Yeah, like I said, the forty seven percent Rotten Tomato score. I don't know what they were smoking or or taking, like they were taking bath salts or something like that. It's definitely <laughs> not the worst yeah. of the MCU movies. I wouldn't put it in my top five. I would probably put it in like in terms of like where specifically. I don't know, but I'll probably put it in my top fifteen. Okay. Of MCU films, so it's like more mid, gotcha. um, kind of like what Amanda said. Like I saw it twice already. I don't really need to see it, but I, but but with that said, like I love these characters though, so I would yeah. love to see more of these characters show up in other other properties or have them get their own spinoff series or movies or whatever. So if we get more of that, I'll be I'll be here for it. But if we don't get another Eternals movie, I won't. I won't cry over it. I just want yeah. more of the character. But no, I'll, I'll say I'll cry over it if we don't get to see the characters more. But yeah, yeah. we will. I'm sure they're going to show up, show up more. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I want to see the characters again. So yeah, I'm looking but at. It's it. definitely not the worst movie. I and agree. You. I agree, Chris. Man, your overall takes of the film. Uh, if you want to put a score on it, and of course your rankings on where this lands on your list, my friend. Yeah, I got my little list here. It doesn't have a like Black Widow or Shang Chi yet. I have to make a new list. This is from 2019, so it's a little dated. Um, overall thoughts on the movie again, I, and I rarely watch a movie twice, like in the theaters. There's so so much other shit to watch, but it, my score definitely didn't drop. I th- I really like the movie, and like I'm very like I'm usually like I just usually just try. I usually agree with like the critics. I'm just like okay, if you guys say it's whack, then it's probably pretty whack. If you guys say it's good, I guess I'll see what's good about it. Sometimes, of course, there's disagreements, but this one I really just don't understand it. Um, maybe I'll never understand why it's like why it's rated this way. But mm-hmm. I can look at all the DCEU movies, and I'm sure they're all rated higher than this. And this is probably better than every single one of them. Maybe, maybe not like Man of Steel or something like that, but it's 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 as good as any of them. Um, oh, okay, okay, at least it, okay. easily, yeah, easily. Um, Ellie's getting, maybe, maybe, Ellie's maybe, Ellie's uh, getting triggered. He's getting maybe, triggered. Uh, maybe Zack Snyder. Like, I'll give I'll, I'll give I'll give uh, I'll give Zack Snyder I'll give Zack Snyder uh, Justice League higher. Okay. Um, and, and hey, but, um, Chloe gave huge props. Is I'm literally this was like a DC. I'm not going to even lie. This was a DC almost yeah. blueprint. But the yeah, Eternals are better Justice yeah. League than Justice League <laughs> yeah, at this point. I mean, for literally, sure, DC, sure, MCU sure, gave sure, more respect sure. on DC movies than DC yeah. films. Like Superman, McCarty, Batman, McCarty, and McCarty running scenes Flash. way better than Ezra Miller. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I yeah, agree. Yeah. So here, yeah, looking at my list, I, looking at my list, yeah, definitely top fifteen. It might be like I only have twenty two on here, so like it's maybe it's like 13, 12. That's around there. It's like mm-hmm. it's like right in the middle yeah. of the pack, but these. This is a list of good ass movies. Like these yeah. movies are good to me, and like the yeah. worst movies that people hate, I don't hate them. I just think they're just not as good as the other ones. But mm-hmm. this one is just really more confusing. So then, like, then I'm more compelled to like even like rate it higher because I'm just like y'all really violated this movie on, on the on the review. So it's like, I hope it's not your prejudice because I can't think of anything else. Because like, yeah, there's no perfect movie. Every Marvel movie we can say we can talk about what we would have liked to see better, but. You're not going to tell me this is 48 percent that this if this was a, in school this would be failing out of college <laughs> drop <laughs> like, out college drop yeah out. we're, we're yeah. not we're not doing that um and i think yeah, it's that's, unfair that's to bring up like infinity war and endgame in the conversation for any of these phase four movies like it took which i've seen people do like it took 10 years, 10 to, build years to, to build up yeah let's infinity talk about war standalone movies let's endgame. talk about everybody's yeah. first yeah. movie yeah. that's then yeah. then what are we talking about i think yeah go ahead amanda no, 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 no! I'm saying like it's yeah. true. Like you can't compare certain ones, but the standalones, yeah. there's been more like misses than hits if we really look at it. I agree. Kind of. I agree. I'm just saying. So like yeah. Eternals, like to be they mid got... of the pack is like debut. Like mm-hmm. that's still solid. 100. I mean, I yeah. agree with everything you guys said. I mean, I'm a little. I've only seen it once. I, I was planning on seeing it twice, and I hopefully can see it twice before it ends this the- theatrical run. But based on my one watches, it's top ten for me. Um, uh, just due to the there fact is. that I, I do give Chloe a lot more credit than I think she's getting or hasn't been getting. 
the fact that she had 10 characters to introduce in the MCU. Again, even Michael brought it up, the Guardians, you know, it was very obscure, but, you know, it's familiar characters in a sense of a Peter Quill type of a, uh, a fun mix of Spider-Man and Iron Man and Groot and all, familiar things. But even then, you know, introducing the world building in this film, Celestials, Deviants, the implications of how everything was so small compared to what this film had to bring. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I speak very highly of the film. Again, I, I could see it a second time and, and maybe pick out some things that maybe didn't work for me, but it's, it's top tier, top 10 MCU in my opinion. And, and like you guys said, if we don't get a sequel, that's fine, but definitely need more of these characters, uh, whether it's in yeah. Disney Plus, Thor's coming up soon. I, I would not be surprised if one of these characters make an appearance in Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy 3, uh, especially with an Adam Warlock being in the mix and the more you know, intergalactic stuff. And again, you know, I thought this was going to be the foundation of X-Men. I still think there's going to be some X-Men ties somehow, some way. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed it. And, I, and I'm excited to see what Chloe does now that she's going to be potentially doing Star Wars. And, and we'll see what, I don't think Kevin Feige is going to let her go uh, when it comes to, if it's not a, 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 a Eternals 2, maybe she can be the next Avengers director uh, because she had a Jeez. huge plate of characters to deal with and, and who knows what the future holds for that for that wonderful uh, director but there you have it last little thing I want to bring up to everyone and, and appreciate all, all you guys tuning in and watching us in the replay but the last thing I want to bring up to you starting with you Amanda hmm. just general final take on phase four for you so far including the shows the wow. movies is it just me or it's 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 a lot of risk taking some of it's worked some of it hasn't but just in general what three films in four shows in how are you feeling about this phase so far i mean they are taking risks which is awesome and like some do work for people some don't but i think again because they're character driven it's who you gravitate towards the most so even if they do take those risks like it's it's a heavy slate and we still have more to come so it's like crazy to even think of um it's it's you know, it's good. It's doing great things. It's changing yeah. it up a bit. I feel like personally for myself, I am getting like that superhero fatigue in certain cases where it's like, it's a lot that we've, we've gone through and yeah. it's still going. And like, I, I'm still surprised and I'm like, this is fresh and this is cool. But for me, yeah. it's like, it, it's still going <laughs> and it, it's, it's a lot. No and in, no, no there's near in, no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So like, it, I, that's just me personally, but yeah. they're doing great things and uh, some of it's refreshing and some of it's kind of the same, but it, yeah. it's fun to talk about these with you guys and everyone else. So that's the bonus. Chris, man, same for you. Uh, opening the gates up with Wanda, getting Falcon, your favorite character, uh, you know, low key, what if, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, now this, and we got Spider-Man coming up in a, next month. Phase yeah. four, very risky, like Amanda said. I think this is the this is the perfect time to do it because after Avengers Endgame, you gotta, yeah. you know, at this point, we're all eating at the hands of Marvel, so they can do whatever they want, which it seems like they're doing right now. But yeah. is it a little bit where are we headed? You know, we got multiverse, we got multiverse, we got a celestials, we got time travel, we got all the implications from Endgame. But right now, it doesn't seem like it's, there's a focus. But we know Kevin Feige always has a plan, but that plan we don't know quite yet. Yeah, we always know there's a plan. And all the movies that we know that are coming, they're all are still under phase four. Like none of them are phase five. Yeah, nothing's right? phase five. No, yeah. Phase yeah. Five. Nope. Yeah. So I think we're in like the fucking like we're in like the layup line of a basketball game. Like yeah, this is like we're some, seeing yeah. like we're just we're just, just warm up. This is the, the crowd ain't the fans ain't there yet. Everybody getting popcorn and beers. Yeah. We like the, the, the craziness hasn't started yet. Shang-Chi was, was probably like a big a big thing. Eternals is a big yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and then Spider-Man, that's not that's not that's not there yet. You know, we'll get to Spider-Man, we'll get to Love and Thunder, we'll get to Quantum Manium, we'll get yeah. the strange. Like that's when it's gonna really see like where can it hang with yeah. phase three? Because phase yeah. three is like it's how it's just, it's almost impossible. Sleep. And and for phase four to even judge it based on like none of the heavy hitters have started yet. Mm -hmm. Disney Plus doesn't count. Like that's it's just like oh that's cute like you you did well with Disney Plus like that's cute but like you're real heavy hitters you're not we haven't hit that yet so I think that we we'll, we will rate it a lot differently in a year's time in, in two years time yeah and I mean hey not sleeping on Disney Plus Loki you know we had our conversations with the Loki yeah, 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 yeah. 
I'm hoping that Hawkeye, which the more I see more Hawkeye, the less confident I get about it. I don't know what I it is. I tried to tell you about Hawkeye. I told you about Hawkeye I don't know first, before that even started. I told you. Like, what Christmas. I'm hoping, it's gonna, I'm hoping it's gonna Man, <laughs> just give me home rumors alone. out there. That's all I need, man. Yeah, we'll see. Later to come in the mix, but uh, Michael, man, your take on phase four again. I don't think there's been a, a clear cut. Are we focusing on the multiverse? Are we focusing on the celestials? Are we building to the X Men and Fantastic Four? It seems a little muddled right now, but we all know Kevin Feige is something circled on that calendar that he's uh approaching. But just your thoughts on this phase so far, and if, if there's anything that's like number one out of your phase so far, the phase four. I think phase four is the age of Ultron of the phases. And what I mean by that is a lot of people are like hated age of Ultron and talk, talk, even though I didn't, I didn't hate age of Ultron. I was like, all right, like it could have been better. That's obviously the weakest of the Avengers, but I didn't hate it. But because of all the things that they introduced later on, it made going back to age of Ultron, it made it way more important. If you go back yep. and be like, okay, now I can appreciate true, true. the movie more. And appreciate that, things yeah. That they, yeah, that they put into the movie and that, that they were building to it. Like you saw, it kind of all goes back to age of Ultron. I kind of think that's what, phase four is right now it's like the rebuilding literally the rebuilding phase of the mcu mm -hmm. because a lot of the act robert downey jr uh, etc like a lot of these actors are phasing out and so now they're re rebuilding the mcu with these new characters and and uh coming in and then plus like uh, they're doing a lot of course correcting that they weren't allowed to do in the other phases were like the beginning of the mcu were like because you had ike perlmutter at the head um, yeah. of a known racist and sexist where yeah. Kevin Feige wanted to introduce Captain Marvel and Black uh, uh, Cap Captain Marvel and Black Panther way earlier right. but he wasn't allowed to because he was under uh Alan Horn uh Shane Black wanted a female villain in Iron Man 3 but yeah, Ike Perlmutter said yeah. you can't have a female villain in yeah. my movie or yeah. in my franchise so you know the, don't sell Kevin, toys and all yeah, that don't sell yeah. toys even even the controversy with Black Widow not having her own toy and like the Avengers yeah. and everything like that <clears throat> right she was the only one that's all because of Ike Perlmutter so I feel like yeah this phase is doing a lot of that course correcting where you have another female-led movie with Black Widow. You have an Asian-led movie with Shang-Chi. Yeah. You have two Asian-led movies coming out this, that came out this year with Eternals and Gemma Chan. Yeah. So like more Black characters showing up with Monica Rambeau and, and Ironheart, Riri Williams getting her own series. You got more gay characters, Fat, Fastos being the first gay character. Val Valkyrie is confirmed to be gay. Young Avengers is coming, Wicked and Hulk. Like, so yeah. I feel like, yeah, this phase is just like a rebuilding phase. And part of the problem, and like when, when you have, when you're first building things out, is like you, you have pitfalls. Sometimes mm -hmm. the structure falters mm -hmm. and you, you put in something and sometimes you got to go back and, you know, do it. So like, yeah, yeah is this phase a little bit weak? It is, but I, ex I expected it to be because it's bringing, it's pulling no. a lot of new concepts that they probably didn't even think when they first started started the mcu that they were going to itch celestials the yeah, watcher yeah. like yeah yeah, yeah. very true and how far have... we how far behind we are too like of just overall scheduling like we we could have been further along minus the pandemic so we would have had we would have been singing a different yeah. tune probably. chris uh no way home was supposed to come out four days ago just, yeah. i mean it feels like it has four days ago. It feels like it has. Don't do that. So. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> That's true, man. A great point. Great point. Yes, it's yes, true. yes. And then also with that, like because of like all like the the building and the representation aspect of it, like even like the course correcting of Hawkeye being deaf in the comics, which is something that he is in the comics, but he wasn't in the other movies. But it seems yeah. like in the Hawkeye movie, they're bringing that aspect in there. Like yeah. because of that, like and most of the movies were headlined by a white man named Chris. Like. It's, 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 it's creating a, like a lot of people are, are do it, having that backlash of yeah, like yeah. oh yeah. Marvel's going woke and it's like no we're just having different voices and different characters show up in the MCU that right. like that aren't just everybody being straight white men like yeah. Yeah. the women exist white women exist black women exist yeah. black men exist gay black men exist black female characters exist. like Asian superhero like so yeah, yeah like it's just this, well this said, is the man. this is the building phase so yeah yeah I agree. And so like Chris said, this is uh, the, the layup line and we're now the game's about to get started, you know, and the game has gotten started in a certain sense. First quarter. Now we're getting, you know, second quarter yeah. and so on and so forth. So I, it's exciting. Uh, and, and well said by everyone on the panel and, uh, you know, phase four, a lot more stuff coming. And we uh, we haven't even heard the word X-Men or Fantastic Four, which is just even crazier to think uh, that we still haven't even approached that entity Lord. and what all comes with that in the MCU. So we're just getting started, as Chris said. So uh, 
Funny that Chris so is funny, guys. This is a little behind the scenes. You know, Chris hit me up when I told him we were going to do this. Like, oh, I was thinking, you know, about an hour and a half or so. We're, we're approaching three hour mark, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you can expect with this great panel of uh, incredible people and, and the thoughts and, and, and opinions on things. And I appreciate every single one of you all. And uh, we that's talked how about I felt, that's how I felt about my eternal review, review right? I went with Ron. <laughs> when I was talking with Ron. I was like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't talk no more than 15, 20 minutes. And yeah. it was like a whole hour. Not like, I was like, SpongeBob, three hours yeah. later. <laughs> Right, right, and I was right, like, right. I'm not cutting. It. I was like, I'm not cutting any of it. I felt like it was a good conversation, but I was like, damn. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is I what happens, that. man. This is what the MCU does to us. But hopefully, hey, we got more conversations coming up in the coming weeks with Hawkeye and, of course, that that Spider Man, that friendly neighborhood Spider Man, and all the leaks. Uh, but <laughs> listen, again, uh, starting off with with the uh, with the person we open up the show with, Amanda. I always appreciate you. So glad to catch up with you and hear your thoughts mm. on the film. But let the people know. Where they can find you? What's the next incredible content you have lined up for the people? Yeah, well, this was so much fun. Happy to be back. I missed you guys. And this discussion was great. I learned so much. It was great. Um, yeah, you guys can always find me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. You can check out my website, CandidXCinema.com. I have my Spencer review up. Belfast is coming out Friday, one of my favorite films of the year. It's so, so good. And I'm excited for everyone to watch it. Um, I watched The Power of the Dog this morning, so that's going to be up. And I watched Home Sweet Home Alone speaking to the christmas spirit (laughs) and uh that'll be up probably this friday so yeah just come find me a lot of great content coming from uh amanda and guys definitely subscribe to her channel check her out on twitter she's one of the best followers like follows the people to follow she has so many great opinions on things i love it uh check out her website all that fun stuff and amanda just keep putting out that great content for the people because you have amazing content that people uh are, are should be invested into so chris man New York team's looking good, man. It's uh, it's that time of the year, you know, and uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that, and, and your team's looking good, man. But more le- more importantly, you got some great content live for the folks, and I want to know what's, what's coming out, man. What's coming out? Yeah, of course. Well, just I have to be clear that we don't acknowledge the Brooklyn Nets on this side. Just that's that's one Brooklyn. Um, it's, all, it's a Nixon words on this side, you're. But enough about that. Um, we at Tate's take. What are we doing next? We've got some Netflix stuff that's coming down the pike for it next week. But until then, I'm still doing Insecure Weekly. So look out for that um, on Sunday slash Monday. Um, great show so far. we got episode four coming this weekend. And you talk about movies in the beginning, about things that I'm watching. And there's a movie on Netflix that's coming tomorrow. I'm, I don't think I have time to review it, but it's called Passing. You guys may have seen it already. It on, I think it was on the film festival circuit Mm -hmm. tessa thompson thomas tessa thompson Thompson. uh thompson yeah tessa thompson is the lead and i forgot her her co-star but real good movie real i think it's based on a book and real like uh you know race in 1920 new york city so um real cool movie if you guys want to check that out it's about um this uh black woman who can pass for white and she literally marries a white dude who doesn't know that she's black and her kind of, you know, coming trying to come back into the black side of town and and reacclimate and still keep this this secret. So, real cool movie that's coming out to Netflix tomorrow. So, just a little tidbit, a little quick little Tate's take for the freezy. Um, but if you guys are into that kind of that kind of stuff, you can subscribe if you don't already. But like I see, I, I always see some of the some of the some of the goats in, in in the chat, some of the people that just always been showing showing you love and showing us love um, by proxy. So, real good to reconnect with the, with the people. Well said, man. Again, yeah, passing. I actually checked it out today, and uh, it really, yeah, really interesting film. Uh, Ruth Nega, I think, was uh, the actress yes. name. Uh, yes, it's Claire. Yes, yes. Uh, very interesting film, like you said. Uh, and Rebecca Hall, we talked about Iron Man three, her directorial debut. So, uh, and Rebecca oh, Hall, yes. great. Yep, yep. Nice. So, hey, guys, taste take links in the bio. The secure reviews. I, I, I'm, I have to catch up with secure, but I always like to, you know. Pop on the video, give it a like, uh, and, and definitely show them some support, guys. And uh, the, the, the Knicks, man, they're looking good. They're looking uh, we good. humble, we humble, we humble, we humble. It's early, it's early. Keep the injuries early. away and, you know, play yeah, off. Yeah, facts, facts, <laughs> But uh, last but certainly not least, man, again, this gentleman here, I'm always just appreciative to have him on and to share his thoughts on things, the knowledge from the comics, uh, the, the getting into depth with the conversations here. I really appreciate him. That's Michael, man. Why don't you let the people know where they can find you? Chuck a review. I know just dropped uh but what else can we expect on your wonderful platform my friend yeah elliot chris amanda oh as always it's a pleasure i always love 
coming here on the stream and kicking it with you guys. Like I said, yeah, the Chucky review, I uploaded it while we were uh, talking here live. I'm going to do uh, each episode weekly. Uh, episode five actually is just dropped uh, like 52 minutes ago. It came on at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I'm going to check that out and then record my review for that. Uh, the Harder They Fall, I'm going to check that out. That's coming. Review for that is coming out. Uh, also a new Netflix like anime show arcane arcane that just yeah mm -hmm. that just dropped i'm gonna watch that check review review that as well and also um i saw Encanto yesterday review embargo doesn't lift until next week's but stay on the lookout for a uh, review coming with that and then also on my own channel for the first time since shang chi i'll be going live with uh fantastic frankie and my other co-host ron and we will also be talking about Eternals. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts again, which you already heard my thoughts, but you haven't heard <laughs> Fantastic Frankie and uh, Ron's uh, thoughts with regards to Eternals. So Pola, I think I think it's right now, because you know, Frankie's always busy. So I think right now we're, we're gonna do Thursday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if not, hit the bell notification button on my channel and you'll be alerted when uh, I put up the announcement for nice. the review. Thank you, Jessica. That's my best friend over there. So sh thank you for joining in the stream, supporting uh, Movie Files' channel. But yeah, so be on the lookout. Support, Follow me on TikTok as well. I made a whole rant about how uh, Fastos and his husband should have tongued each other down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also talking about, like I said, for Native American Heritage Month, I'm talking about Native American superheroes. So if you don't know about... Uh, Native American superheroes in comics. I just noticed my light, my lights died over here. But yeah, you don't know about Native American superheroes in comics? Check me out on TikTok, and you'll learn. You'll learn something. So there you go. And and we just got a you know all pun intended, just a taste of Michael's thoughts on a fast so definitely check him out on his uh, TikToks and his social media accounts, man. And again, to Amanda, Chris, Michael, thank you guys so much. Such a great discussion. Can't wait to have more of these in the future. And yep. uh, everyone in the chat, thumbs it up, sharing, super chats, all that fun stuff. It does not go unnoticed. I appreciate you all. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You all be safe out there. Check out some of those movies we recommended. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the flippity flip. Peace, everybody. Ciao.